All right, good morning. I'm here with uh, this modern deck that I've been trying lots of different variations of. Uh, the basic, there are kind of two basic principles driving it. One is the Thopter Foundry Sword of the Meat combo, which uh, with Quark Plan Ironworks can go infinite, making infinite life, infinite Thopters, and infinite mana. Um, there's also kind of the ensnaring bridge plus uh, Witch Bane Orb or Bottled Cloister combos to kind of walk out combat and targeting you. Um, but today I'm trying to mix in a third, a third combo into the sweet artifact combo deck. Uh, Lantern of Insight and Codex Shredder, which has been used by, you know, Lantern Control decks to create like a, kind of like a hard lock where they usually like use cards like Thoughtseize to take a card from your hand. And then they have perfect information about what they should shred you for. Um, I want to try a slightly different approach with this deck. Like this deck is a pretty strong prison deck. There are a few cards out of each deck that it cares about, but not many. And so I'm thinking that maybe Codex Shredder plus Lantern of Insight. Like Lantern lets us see what they have coming and Shredder lets us mill it away. Um, might let us deal with those cards. Also, since we have a lot of combos we're building ourselves. Having Lantern of Insight on and shredding our own top decks when they're not going to facilitate a combo seems good. Uh, and then Codex Shredder just blindly uh, on ourselves, I think, can be very good. Um, we have Faithless Looting, which if we hit, it's basically like hitting a pretty highly desirable spell. And uh, we can also just shred away our own Swords of the Meek which is just value, then if we sacrifice a different artifact, the sword will come back and we can start doing our Thopter sword thing. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I'm not sure if this is going to work or not, but I think it's really important to like constantly keep experimenting. So this is the experiment for this morning. I guess probably all day. Uh, so uh, we are in the midst of, I think I joined... Yeah, this league, so uh, I gave it one try last night just to make sure it wasn't a ridiculous, <coughs> ridiculous idea. It looked like it worked pretty well. Um, so we're just going to launch into it. Um, you know, I talked to some like people in the Lantern control community. Uh, you know, they're like, having only four shredders isn't really enough to go with your lanterns. And... Uh, that's fine. Like we don't, we're not looking for full control from the lantern combo. Uh, okay, so here this hand, uh, we have needle and damping sphere, which can interfere with some decks. We have half of a thopter sword combo, and the shredder. So this mox is going to turn on pretty easily. Uh, we need to like you know draw a bridge or a whir or a thopter foundry off the top of our deck or a faithful looting, but that's that's a lot of things. So like we should find one of them. I'm gonna play Skullmer Void. I'm gonna play Shredder, which is gonna be better than Pithing Needle in the dark, and also just get the Smock Sample down. Um, you know if our opponent plays something like Thoughtseize. Um, I want to protect this, I, like, I want this mana source. Sometimes I'd rather have them take an opal, but not today. Right. So, I'm guessing I'll take the Pithing Needle, which we'd usually use on Liliana after seeing that they're this kind of Thoughtseize based deck. Um, occasionally I've seen them take Sword of the Meek, but that's not effective. Um, they're probably also trying to figure out exactly what's up. You can probably figure it out from the Codex Shredder and the Sword. Um, but they don't know, for example, that we have Bridge yet. But you'd probably infer that from the Codex Shredder. So Shredding myself, uh, because I want to hit either a Faithless Looting or a Sword. And uh, Let's see. So I think I'll jam this other shredder. And we'll just shred ourselves really hard. We have, th oh, I guess we have three mana sources. We can play. Damping Sphere doesn't really help us. Sword of the Meek 
gives us something to sacrifice if we don't want to sacrifice anything else. I'll play the sword. This deck really benefits from having its hand relatively empty because of um, Ensnaring Bridge. So, you know, if we didn't have Codex Shredders, these would probably be like Mishra's Baubles or Lands. I feel pretty good about them not being lands. Um, it might have been, you know, nice as Mishra's Baubles, but right. The point is to you know, see how this plays out over a bunch of different matchups. Right, it didn't hit a looting yet, ah, but we hit a Thopter Foundry, so that's sweet. And Foundry tends to be very difficult for. Um, this sort of deck to answer. Like, they can have Abrupt Decay and they can have, like, Colgan's Command. And I'm going to shred myself some more, hoping to hit another Sword of the Meek so that when I sacrifice the Sword uh, to the Thopter Foundry, you know, I could have two Swords return. Obviously, we missed, but, you know, I'm liking the chance for extra hits. Like, um, having a Thopter with multiple swords can make it, you know, big enough to kind of come back and kill Liliana. Or, um, you know, like a 3-5 might be big enough to fight against that Tarmogoyf right now. I'm going to take this hit for 4. Um, with Thopter Foundry going, my life total is probably not an issue. Uh, but having creatures to put pressure on the opponent, like their life total is already low. And if they play a Planeswalker... Uh, being able to pressure that Planeswalker is good. They have a bunch of removal spells like Lightning Bolts or like Fatal Pushes, which are just stranded otherwise. I guess they're Jun, so they probably don't have Fatal Push. Um, but like, they're just going to plow those into the first few Thopters I make. Alright, so they have the Colgan's Command. And we're going to sacrifice the Sword. I sacrifice the sword and not the foundry because this way the sword comes back equipped on the Thopter instead of just having a 1-1 one, one that's not equipped, so it's basically saving us 2 mana. So not, not the ideal outcome, but um, we'll live. I guess I should shred on my upkeep stuff on my turn. Alright, uh, Spellscape shows up. Just a moment too late. Like, if we had the spell sky to turn earlier, it would have fulfilled its main deck purpose of protecting that foundry. Um, but we're, we're, like, not in bad shape currently. Like, they don't have that much pressure. There's no Liliana. Uh, so we really want to draw, like... A bridge, or another Thopter Foundry, War of Invention. Uh, okay, this is, I mean, another land is actually kind of good. If uh, the, Another nice aspect of these Codex Shredders is we can spend 5 mana and return something from our graveyard. So they're picking up all our guys. Um, so that, like, if we just hit another mana source, we can use a Codex Shredder to get back the Thopter Foundry. Which is pretty exciting. I'm gonna keep shredding myself. I wanna hit, like, a Faithless Looting to increase, you know, like, if I have a bad top deck, I can then Looting to redraw. Okay. Pithing Needle. This feels interesting. They certainly have a Liliana somewhere in their deck. Um, I guess we don't have any Faithless... We could... Well, we can shred ourselves for Faithless Lootings and see if we have options. We hit a... Another Sword. That's exciting. Uh, okay, so we'll Pithy Needle. They do have, like, Scavenging Ooze, but they only have one green, so if they cast it... It's still not going to be able to eat things very fast. Whereas Liliana of the Veil... 
I guess we don't have anything to discard, but um, Lilia, Alana of the Veil can go wrong, right? Like if they say like play it and we don't answer it quickly, it can ultimate us. I guess with the five six Tarmogoyf breathing down our neck, maybe Liliana's not actually that big of a deal. It's possible I should have named Ooze. All right, so they're about to clip us for eight. So we need basically a bridge or a Thopter Foundry or a Whirr to be what's on top of our deck. Whirr might not even be good enough because we don't have enough mana to make two Thopters. Yeah. So basically it has to be bridge or Thopter Foundry here. It's not going to do it, so we're going to get killed here. Okay, so they don't really have enough burn for Witchbane Orb to be necessary. And we don't need an infinite number of Thopters, just like an active Thopter Foundry is sufficient. We don't need Damping Sphere. You know, they're not trying to like chain off a bunch of spells on us. Uh, they do have a bunch of destroy effects that we want to deal with, so these welding jars are very appealing. Uh, Faithless Looting is one of my favorite spells, but because they are making us discard, casting it early is kind of a liability, because we're putting good cards in our hand and then they're taking those cards away. Uh, Tesseract helps us kind of like replenish material, which we might need because they thought sees us a whole bunch. And... I think two pithing needles is about right. Like, we mostly want to needle ooze so that it can't interrupt our Thopter Sword combo. This is probably about right. I would like to get the second Tezzeret in. I guess maybe it's better than a Faithless Looting. I love looting though. Tezzeret's. Gotta be better though. Oh, oh, I know. I usually, like, let's see. I'll turn one mox. Like, they're breaking up our mox synergies and the games are going long, so we don't need explosiveness. 18, 21. Yeah, should be good. Uh, so, I like this hand. It has you know, many, many layers of protection for uh, any any key artifacts that we play. And no Shredder yet. We have this Lantern. Uh, one thing that Sam said was that, let's see, we're on top. I guess we don't really have any way, like, we don't have any, like, fetch lands, so we can't crack to manipulate the Lantern knowledge. I guess we could decide not to whir sometimes to take advantage of the lantern knowledge. Um, but if we could get like one more mana source to go with this whir, we already have the sword of the meek. And they can't even really discard the sword here because it's about as good in our graveyard as it is in our library. All right, so they're they're going after the spell skate. Since the spell skate is a meaningful layer of protection for all of our combo pieces. And we have this Glimmer Void on top, so we're going to be able to whir for uh, Thopter Foundry, unless they, you know, Thought sees us here. Or, you know, Inquisition, good enough. Um, I will end up playing this sword, because uh, it's, you know, slightly better in play than our graveyard. It's possible that they have you know, surgical extraction in there, and we don't want it to just, like, get lost in the graveyard. Um, plus, we can potentially equip up the spell skite. It is actually kind of tempting to sacrifice the Lantern of Insight here to not draw a Spire Bluff Canal. Like, the card isn't, this Lantern isn't doing much for us right now. And we don't really need a fourth mana source. I guess if we're assembling 
Falter Sword, like having a lot of mana is good. And we're not under pressure yet. <coughs> so we could use the Lantern for a redraw later. Alright, I'll, I'll, I'll take it. Um, so I'll play this. Equip the sword to the spell skite. Maybe even like, maybe we only wanted two moxes and a third looting. Like, I would really like to be able to shred into the lootings or, you know, looting when having a lot of mana like this. So here's their Bloodbraid Elf for Ooze. And here we're pretty glad that we don't have the sword in our graveyard. That Ooze looks like it'll be active fairly soon, and quite active because they have all that green. We can block, I think, pretty safely with our spell skate here. And now we're, we're under enough pressure that I'm actually just going to use this Lantern of Insight on myself. Alright, we got a Whirr. So. We can either Thopter Sword, or we can Bridge. Uh, Thopter Sword like lets us get ahead and put pressure on an opponent, where Bridge just kind of puts us in this attrition game where they could outdraw us. I guess Thopter Sword is going to be vulnerable to this Ooze. This Ooze is a huge problem, so I think we actually need to Bridge until we can find a Pith and Needle to deal with the Ooze. So one, two, three. Leave the Spell Skate untapped in case something terrible happens to it. So that was pretty good. Like, obviously, Lantern of Insight making us not draw a land was worth a card, and we got the thing that we needed. It's probably like not an ideal outcome, but it didn't feel bad. Like, getting that selection over my deck was fine. This deck like doesn't care so much about card advantage as about getting the right card every time. All right, so we're gonna have the spell sky, oh. Redirect this. Change the target. Yes. And we actually got a little lucky here. There's a bug on Moto where if they had targeted the ensnaring bridge or the um, spell sky and the ensnaring bridge, the we wouldn't have been able to redirect. Which is wrong. I uh, like right. I tried to redirect when they're like two damage to your uh, spell skite, destroy your ensnaring bridge, and my whole chat went wild. They're like, you can't do that, and um, like you should be able to re redirect every instance of the word target. This is why we play a uh, full set of welding jars and a full set of spell skites. Like, people have a lot of destroy effects. You know if they're a red based deck, they're going to bring in every destroy effect they have. You have to have all of those things to protect your bridge. Like, we build this game plan that completely relies on these cards. Um, so anyway, like, right, I went to the judge chat and I was like, judges, my chat told me I was crazy when I thought I could redirect both of these instances of the word target. And the judges were like, you're right. Um, but like, Sam was here, Sam pulled some pro players, I mean, he pulled his, he, 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 Kidler, Kidler googled, and, uh, most people thought that it was in fact right, that, um, so we can pop this Shredder. They don't have a green mana up right now to get a, a Welding Jar. I'm gonna do that. 
one, two, three, four, five. I would get a spell skite, but we can't cast spell skite right away. Our opponent doesn't have any cards in hand, so their chance of like making us discard it, I guess, is on the low side. And a spell skite would help deal with like these lightning bolts. But we're like we're not quite in like lightning bolt to death range. I guess they don't have any one power guys. I don't have to cast this opal. Uh, I'm gonna hold this one card in my hand. Oh, I guess like we can faithful saluting it. It's probably better if it were a land, because then if they inquisition us or thought sees us, they can't take it. So, yeah, probably better to hold a land, but uh, it's nice to hold something so that if they Faithless Looting you, or if you draw Faithless Looting, you have a, a thing you can do. So they're... Right, they're eating the spell Spellskite, getting some life, powering up their ooze. And because we have these shredders, they're just going to, you know, eat as much as possible so that we don't have selection on what to get back in the future. Um, I am going to keep my hand size at one, though. I don't want, you know, this Fulminator Mage to be able to attack. Even if, you know, being able to Faithless loot away two cards would be more desirable. Right, this Confidant could turn into a problem. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, I recall that I tended historically to bring in gear per ether grids in this matchup. Maybe like trim... Maybe trim like another opal. It's hard, like... With, um, all right, they're going to let us search for a land. Like, the, the lantern combo takes up extra space, so some of the sideboard cards that I'm used to sideboarding in, there's not necessarily room for. And so I have to kind of, like, refigure out all of, all of my sideboard plans with this experimental deck configuration. Um, but like, Grid being able to kill uh, Confidant so that this deck doesn't kind of grind us so hard on resources can be a big deal. Right, now I'm kind of in the market for a spell sky. Get another sword here. Spellscape would be good, Thopter Foundry would be good. They do keep tapping out. And if they don't have enough green sources, we can play around the scavenging ooze. But yeah, this this confidant oof. Alright, the ancient grudge is just going to do us in here. So, good match. Um, I feel like, you know, Jund is, like, slightly favorable. Um, we didn't find, like, Bottled Cloister or either of our Tezzerets, which I feel like contributes substantially to kind of matching them on card resources. Like, we have all the Jars and all of the Spell Skites, but we still have to kind of keep about pace with them in terms of cards we're drawing because they're going to bring in, you know, Colgan's Command and Assassin's Trophy and Ancient Grudge. Um, they usually only have, like, one copy of Ancient's Grudge because they have so many other artifact destruction effects already. But, like, you know, they have, like, six or seven of these cards in their deck. And if, if we have eight and they have seven, you know, we're a little bit ahead of them. We can obviously play, like, duplicate copies of our bridges. But, uh... You know, if they're drawing two cards every turn, we're drawing one card. We're going to fall behind 
vice versa. Like if we're drawing two cards every turn, they draw one card, we're gonna get ahead. So it's just kind of a question of who draws more of those key cards to start pulling ahead in card resources. So we don't know what we're playing against, but this is in the dark gonna be pretty good. Um, a hand has to be pretty bad to have, and like have looting in it for me to throw it away. Looting just does so much for us. And Thopter Foundry, there are a bunch of decks where like, you know, if you resolve Thopter Foundry on turn two, uh, and can find a sword in any reasonable amount of time, they're pretty done for. Uh, Utopia Sprawl. I'm not really sure what we're playing against here. Maybe like some kind of like tooth and nail deck. Uh, we have this Mox. I don't think they're very likely to destroy our first land. Maybe it's a little greedy not to play the Spire of Industry here. Okay, so we need to keep the Mox to protect the Glimmer Void. We have a two and a two. So the Mox can be a land. Lantern by itself doesn't really do anything. So I think that's an easy card to pitch. And I think we can pitch the Spire. And we can cast Thopter Foundry. And maybe we just pitch the, pitch the Opal. Or the Damping Sphere. Damping Sphere. If they're playing Utopia Sprawl, this card probably doesn't do a lot. All right, so we'll play the Mox out. So we have Foundry plus War still, so we can do the Thopter Sword thing. We can War for the Sword. If we find a sword naturally, we can use War to get a Car Clan Ironworks to go infinite uh, on swords in this... Uh, If anyone in the chat knows what deck this is, that would be helpful. Um, okay, so we did it. We naturally drew the sword. So we're going to run out the Thopter Foundry. And let's see, so next turn. Wait. You need four permanents in play with three lands to whir. So we're not quite going to be able to whir for uh, infinite yet. Garrick, is this is looking like some kind of like tooth and nail deck? Maybe like Nykthos? Um, which means that Maybe like they're trying to get to like Amrakul plus Xenagos. Alright, so they have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nykthos could make five. So if they have Nykthos, they can do pretty much anything. Um, since I'm not really sure what my opponent's up to, I'm trying to increase my permanent count. Let's see, if we cast Bridge, we're still short of permanent on Thopter Sword. Like we could whir for Pithing Needle if we're afraid of dying immediately. I don't think we're gonna die immediately. My intuition says that we should play this bridge here. And then next turn, if we draw like a land or a zero, I guess an opal, we can whir for four and get Kark Clan Ironworks, sacrifice the opal to play Sword of the Meek, and then sack, sack the bridge to make infinite thopters. Um, if we don't draw a land, we can just play out the sword and start like making a few thopters and then we can go infinite the following turn. Alright, this bridge is going to stop them from attacking with anything more than like CMC th or 3 power, which stops like Garrick's ability from being super problematic for us.
Kessig Wolfren. <laughs> Kessig Wolfren ooh, and Summoner's Pack. Alright, so we, we get to see like the last of their hand. Kessig Wolfron actually knocked me out of GP Portland. I uh, was playing against like a red green Eldrazi opponent and I had Ensnaring Bridge plus Ball of Cloister. So that, you know, I always had zero cards in hand on my opponent's turn. And we're playing like game three. This is for going into day two. Okay, Primeval Titan. I'm guessing we're going to see like Nykthos and something else. Anyway, I have this spell sky and two bridges in play and my opponent's attacking me with like a Noble Hierarch with two other Noble Hierarchs in play. I'm at like 14. I decided to protect my life total and block the Noble Hierarch, knowing full well that my opponent likely has a Lightning Bolt in hand. Alright, so they got Nykthos. So they have a lot, a lot, a lot of mana available here. Um, we might just be obligated to play the spell skite. Let's see. So they can tap Nykthos for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and it costs two, so it's plus five, and they can do it again. So that's ten. This makes twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. Yeah, man. I think if we play the spell skate, it's, we can just redirect the Nick the, the wolf run ability. We'd have to draw something like really absurd for us to to die here. Like they'd have to kill the spell skate, which is possible, but it doesn't look like they're configured to do main deck. Anyway, so I, like I block this um, this noble hierarch and. Um, my opponent immediately slams uh, Kessig Wolf Run, and you know, like I'm like, oh, instead of having like five turns to draw out to these noble hierarchs, I now have one, and you know, it's, it's pretty sweet. Uh, apparently, someone was sitting on the other side of the table like saw this all go down, and they were like, oh, you should see the look on your face. You know, like it was like tr pure horror. I was like, that's fair, right? Like, that's the look on your face when you're getting knocked out of uh, a GP that, you know, GP dates you. Um, okay, so... Okay, so they got another Nykthos. They would have had access to, like, truly absurd amounts of mana here. But I think... I think with the spell skate we're safe. And this next turn, we have enough permanence that we can were to get uh, Core Clan Ironworks. We should actually do it in the upkeep so we don't accidentally draw it. Basically, like all of these like four mana artifacts that are very good in the deck, you never want to draw them because it's much cheaper to tap artifacts to play them. So on our upkeep, we will were blue, 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 one, two, three, four artifacts. Uh, we'll get our art, our ironworks. Thank you for the follow, Jewish Mafia. Ironworks, ironworks, ironworks. There we go. And then we'll draw. So, um, we will use the Thopter Foundry, sacrificing the Sword of the Meek, always return Sword of the Meek, and then we will Ironworks the Thopter, and then run it again. So someone told me a very useful tip while trying to make Swords of the Meek. The, you know, the default for the three button is yes, so you don't have to like move your mouse all the way across the board, you can just click three and 
there's a lot of clicking to go off with Thopter Sword. So anything that takes that one step, once you multiply that by like 20, can like save you minutes. Um, so they're Primeval Titan deck, and they probably have like, I guess they have Pact so they don't necessarily have Cord. But we definitely want to be a Torpor Orb in response to that. Um, they played a bunch of Planeswalkers and Kessig Wolf Run, which makes Needle interesting. Um, Damping Sphere doesn't look like it does a lot against them. They're not really targeting us, we don't need this Witchbane Orb. Um, some decks are so combo-y that like, Thopter's Sword isn't that good against them. The deck looks pretty combo-y. So I think like we might just want to switch to full prison deck, where we use, you know, Tezzeret to find more prison pieces, and Unmorty Ego to just take what they've got. You know, it could turn out to be the wrong plan, but if we ego them, at least we'll see like entirely what they're doing. I'm going to bring in like one Welling Jar. Green has a fair number of destroy effects. Yeah, we don't need this Ironworks once you take out the Sword combo. I could see like playing one fewer Egos and one more Jars. I think Ego early is going to be good. Like, I think against Primeval Titan decks, taking away their Primeval Titans is often a great line of play. So here we have a, a jar to protect it, ourselves, a needle which we can get the wolf run, and we could whir for bridge. So this, this hand seems like it can set up a early defense against the lines of attack we saw in game one. So we'll play this Dark Slick Shores throughout the jar. And I'm just getting Lantern of Insight. So we're increasing the amount of information we have. Stony Silence. Uh, this is the other reason that you bring in an alternate win condition against decks that have access to white. Um, you know that you're going to see a fair number of Stony Silence, so like having Tezzeret or like Gear Per Ether Grid are, you know, ways that you can still win around that. Uh, I see people play things like, you know, Abrupt Decay as a kind of universal answer to whatever hate they might have. And that's fine. Oh, you know, I misplayed there. With the Lantern of Insight, I could have sacrificed it and made our opponent shuffle their library. I probably should have made them shuffle uh, away the Stony Silence. You know, I mean, I'm new to having Lantern of Insight, so I guess I'm not always seeing the optimal plays with it. So I'm not that afraid of plants. I am a little afraid of Garrick. But I guess I could make these, I mean, I guess we're planning on getting Bridge, which would make neither of them that scary, and I should really be afraid of Wolf Run. So I think I'm just going to Needle on Kessig Wolf Run. Oh, I should cast this other Lantern. And so, right, these lanterns are about to be dead, but I still want them out of my hand so that they don't make my hand bigger for the purposes of war. Um, you know, there's an argument for, like, saving them to loot them away, but I'll, I'll draw plenty of cards to loot away later, and right now getting rid of the cards in my hand is pretty important. Also, in theory, I could use the lanterns to shuffle away like, a card for the Stony Silence. Like, Nykthos seems like one of their key cards, so we could do that. 
but I think I'd rather just have the permanence in play right now to improve my words. So, like, having a faithless living on top is awesome. So there's, like, an argument here for playing Turp Orb instead of worrying for Bridge because we don't have any defenses available. And I think because they have Summoner's Pact, a lot of their defenses, like, a lot of their removal spells are going to be creature-based. And they have this Nykthos, so they're going to be able to maybe Titan. They're not hitting us very hard yet. But we might not have that much time to find a bridge. I have two cards and Stony Sands. I guess I'm going to go with the bridge. We'll see if we get punished for it. Um, the Bottled Cloister should let us draw into like another Whirr or the Chirper Orb, but like if we just get beaten down, that time doesn't mean anything. Like we haven't seen anything off the Lantern that suggests that You know, they have like a Pact or a Reclamation Sage, and they could have started with one in their opening hand. So, you know, like the Lantern doesn't give us perfect information, but it does give us some information to work with. So right now you're seeing the Bottled Cloister plus Ensnaring Bridge combo. Ensnaring Bridge makes it so that creatures with power greater than your number of cards in hand can't attack. I guess less well-known is Bottled Cloister, which makes it so that at the beginning of your opponent's upkeep, you exile all the cards from your hand. Uh, so you always have zero cards during their turn for Ensnaring Bridge purposes. And at the beginning of your upkeep, you return all the cards plus an additional card. So uh, not only is it like a one-sided Howling Mine. Okay, so here's the Summoner's Pact. I'm guessing they're going to find a Reclamation Sage and blow up either the bridge or the Cloister. It's, I guess they could also conceivably get Primeval Titan here. Acidic Slime. Alright. So they're going to go after the bridge. All right, their reasoning is they're pretty close to putting us out of our misery, so... We don't have Codex Shorter available. Okay, so that Spell Skite. If we take six, the Spell Skite isn't going to help us that much. Uh, we'd be dead to like a Kessig Wolf Run. So I think we just. Uh, let's see. Uh, card. Nissa. Allies and card. So. Huh. I guess my bot's not being responsive. Um, we s yeah, I want to check real quick the, the wording on Nissa. And because we saw one, and if we're also dead to that. It's probably the right card to name. Minus two to put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature. Okay, so I think we have to do Nissa here. Nissa. Oh, Voice of Zendikar. Got it. Okay. Um, Opal doesn't do anything, but the Cloister's just going to like ship these cards away. I guess there's no harm in casting this one. Mm, 
they can't play this much much this turn because they have to pay for the pack. No, there's the Kessig Wolf run. Spellskate won't be able to save us because of Stony Silence. So we need to draw another bridge or a war. That has to be the card under the Spellskate. I guess they don't have any zero power creatures, so the wolf run doesn't really matter right now. And that's all presuming that we get a bridge anyway. Alright, so we didn't find a bridge. We'll go to game three. Certainly, like, the Lantern Shredder gets weaker against Stony Silence. I don't know if there's really anything to do about that, though. Like, right, it would have been amazing if we had used the Lantern to shuffle away the Stony Silence. Okay, so... We have an early Lantern plus Shredder, and this is kind of why we're, you know, testing these cards right now to see how they work. And, you know, like, if you can draw them in your opening hand and they're not good, that would be saying a lot. I guess it probably would have been better, better to play the Lantern first. We would have gotten another piece of information and had a chance to like shuffle away a key card out of our opponent's deck. Uh, like we can shred ourselves here and hope to hit like Faithful Sitting, but that's not actually that helpful since we already have one. Okay, so I'm gonna play this Glimmer Void and play the Lantern of Insight. And I think I think we'll Pithingil Garrick. Uh, Garrick Wildspeaker can like really ramp their mana. We have this bridge, so uh, and I guess I should pop their Summoner's Pact here. Like. This their deck is a ramp deck, so it has like a lot of mana and not necessarily a lot of threats. So taking away threats like Primeval Titan, oh, the Birds of Paradise. So the Birds of Paradise is gonna be able to attack through a bridge. So I guess we're gonna want to needle Wolf Run. Maybe I should just Wolf like needle Wolf Run from the start. Like, them making a lot of mana isn't necessarily a big deal, since we're prepared to, like, interact with everything they can do with their mana. Like, that's the trick of a prison deck, like, there are different kinds of prisons. Like, some prisons, you're trying to stop your opponent from doing things, like, like a Blood Moon-style prison, where they just can't play any of their cards. Um, right, like, traditional Lantern aims to stop them from having relevant cards. Uh, whereas, like, the Tesserator style prison seeks to make it so all their cards aren't relevant. So, like, you let them play their cards, but, like, they can't do anything with them. They're all, like, blocked by a bridge or messed up by a Witchbane Orb. All that said, this war is going to be pretty good. Um... Looting on top, shredding looting on top seems sweet. Um, I guess these guys are going to be able to attack us one more time. We'll play this bridge. All right, that will let us whir for like a bottle of cloister or a piece of protection. Uh, we're pretty happy with them drawing a birds of paradise. And a land. If we shred our own Faithless Looting, their ooze will likely eat it, but it's better than drawing it. 
So this is an example of us like being able to like filter our draws with the shredder to find exactly what we need, which I think is like a pretty exciting aspect of this. So, right, they have like th now a maximum of like two potential threats. We know one of these is a uh, another bird. Yeah, the shredder really does let us like cut down on our opponent's threats, and like the key thing I'm watching for here is whether like having the shredder and lantern are like costly to our other combinations. But so far it seems, I guess, okay. And certainly like we lost the last game because we didn't, if we had our spell skite one turn earlier, we would have been fine. But we still basically use Lantern of Insight as a bauble. Like we avoided a draw we didn't want. Hmm. So, I guess opponents like deep in the tank as to like what they should do with this Nykthos. I mean, the main thing they have going here is Nykthos and Wolf Run. They have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So they can make like six extra mana with Nykthos. So we'll shred ourselves. Uh, stop on my turn, and then on our upkeep, we'll let's see if we shred ourselves again. We can't whir for Bottle Cloister. We don't actually want to whir for Bottle Cloister, though. We probably need to whir for Pithy Needle. Right, because they can just play the Wolf Run and like keep attacking. So if that's the case. I don't want another Shredder. Like ideally I'd like to draw another Pithing Needle. All right, leaving not exactly what I wanted either, but... Oh, I could have Word in response. Man, there are some sweet interactions with this Lantern that I still need to get the hang of. All right, Ooze eats our Faithless Looting. And actually this Spell Sky solves the problem just fine. So we're going to loot. And then discard looting and yeah, never really want to discard uh, word of invention, but the spell sky is exactly what we need in the situation. So we, we decreased our hand size by casting looting, which is I think one of the reasons why like looting is awesome with bridge, um, like much better than serum visions. And then we have a spell skate to cover the the wolf run. So we're not gonna get killed by any of these birds. Uh, I don't want another lantern of insight, so I'm gonna shred myself here. <laughs> Into another faithful suiting. All right. Uh, we could whir for four. I'm going to do that. I don't want another Faithless Looting either. So I guess maybe if I don't want that card and I know I want to whir, I should probably whir first and then leave the Shredder for the next card in the future. I guess it's it's the same either way. All right, so Bottle Cloister. And the idea, let's see, we'll play this Mox, of course. Box, uh, Cloister will start giving us two cards a turn, so we don't really need to like sandbag any cards for looting. So here in this game, that's kind of gone like a little bit on the long side. Uh, you know, they had. I guess they haven't really had any interaction for us. We've just been interacting with them, but. Um, you know, I feel like this Lantern plus Codex has added a significant deck manipulation to us. Like, it's definitely been worth more than, you know, just a bauble. Right. 
been emptying our graveyard because they accurately recognize that all these faithless lootings are quite useful in manipulating what we're getting. Between the Bottled Cloister and the Codex Shredder, though, we're looking at three cards a turn. So I think, you know, like, obviously they have the mana, they should be getting rid of our deck's engines. Uh, but I, I think it's not hurting us very much at this juncture. Um... So they're continuing to like sandbag their wolf run, hope thinking maybe that we'll forget about it. We don't want another land, but I guess they can't control the top of their deck, so they're drawing that land no matter what. So yeah, we'll shut ourselves. On where do you go? Seems pretty sweet. And with this on where do you go, I'm probably just gonna name like Stony Silence. I think that things are going so well for us as long as we can keep activating these artifacts things are going to be great so blue black like um so stony silence they probably only have like one or two copies But here we get to learn more about their deck. All right, so they have a Pact, a Nykthos. They have two Nissas, four Garricks, Craterhoof, Behemoth, Slime. So, like, we're just really interested in things that get them out of this lock, like Rurik Thar, Acidic Slime. Those are the things that we need to worry about. And the rest of these cards really don't do much. And yeah. So play our welding jar, add more layers of protection to our various engines. Oh, okay. So I never want to shred before I ego, because now we're giving our opponent another pact, which is kind of like their best card. I guess we could like we could have lanterned it away. I guess my bot's just asleep at the wheel today. We'll have to troubleshoot it after the stream's over. I usually get to like look up these cards, which is super helpful. All right, so they're packing. The thing about Rurikthar here is we don't actually need to cast another card to win. Like, we actually have everything we need, and because we have the Bottled Cloister in play, uh, because we have the Bottled Cloister in play, like, our hand size will just be zero for all their attack steps. We have the Wolf Run covered. I'm not actually sure that this gets them ahead. Like, you can just mill them with this existing shredder. Oh, I guess we have a bottled cloister in play. So, we might need to play like one more spell. Like, I might need to play a second shredder. We have one more left in our library. We can get rid of this upkeep trigger. Let me shred them. And play the spell skate. So yeah, I don't think we really have any life gain post board. 
So Rurik is just putting us on one more spell all game. It's just going to have to be the other Codex Shredder. And I think, I think the cards that we have cover whatever else they have. Right, they have an Acidic Slime, but we have a Welding Jar to regenerate whatever they target. And they, they can, I guess they have Slime so that they can get more life. They're going to have a hard time getting, I guess we're going to put creatures in their graveyard. So they're, they're going to be able to cast a few more spells. They're not limited the same way that we are. I don't care about Garrick. I am still going to have to like strategically shred them. But that Garrick does nothing for them. I guess a uh, minus of including these cards is uh, you know, Codex Shredder and Lantern is that you start behaving more like a Codex Shredder and Lantern deck, i.e. you can have games that take a really long time. Being able to cast Spell Sky still under Rurik Thar is nice. Means we have. We can keep adding layers of protection to our key lock pieces. Uh, not being able to cast this Torpor Orb is kind of a bummer. Like, it's often the, the very last piece of prison that you need. draw this card and shred their next card since an Arbor Elf isn't a threat at all. So we'll lose if our Shredder is one of our very bottom cards. But as long as it's not within like the bottom three, it should be okay. I guess we could also draw any of our Tezzerets and we just kill them on the next turn. Yeah, actually, we're in, like, super good shape. Being able to cast Tezzer, it just means that we have a lot of win conditions, of which Shredder is actually the least necessary. There's Titan. I think they don't even want to cast Titan. I mean, I still have to shred them, so they're not going to get it. But, right, like, searching up two lands at this point is just a huge liability. Um, I guess we'll let them draw that land and then shred the next card. I do like having... Okay. Oh yeah, sh word can also just be a shredder. So is it better were for Shredder, or is it better to wait for Tezzeret? If we were for Shredder, three cards a turn, and we kill them in like seven turns. I guess we should just go for the win condition that we have now. Blue, blue, let's make sure that we actually have another Shredder. One, two in the bin. Not an exile, okay. So blue, one, it's enough for Codex Shredder, yes. Alright, 
Get the other codex shredder. And now we'll just go to town on our opponent's library. So yeah, usually like Bottled Cloister is a, a guarantee that you will lose the decking race, but having Codex Shredder in the deck uh, changes that. Which I think is a pretty exciting change. We'll just always yield to this ooze. We don't really care about that. And we'll... Oh, we can save targets. Oh, man. Having a save targets option on Shredder seems awesome. Um, okay. Can I do that now? No, I have to have the ability on the stack. They correct land, they know that they're losing the race, so now they're just, um, manipulating which cards they're getting. Alright, we give them a Garrick, we don't care about Garrick, Garrick's ultimate just makes their creatures more powerful which makes them even worse against the ensnaring bridge. Wolfren we don't care about. We have all the spell skates in the world. There's Tezzeret. Too late to the party though, we don't have enough life to Tezzeret here. Right, like we can just spend a blue mana to deal with the wolf run by redirecting to our spell sky. Uh, taking away their stony silence seems like a pretty hot choice. So here comes the bird, and we need to redirect this trigger with the spell sky. I'm not sure if they've seen this interaction before or if they're just, you know, trolling us in time. I'm guessing we just haven't seen the interaction. I think lots of people don't really see spell Skype coming. Shred. I don't know what Oath of Nyssa gets them, but certainly don't like cards where they get to make a choice that we can't see or influence. So, yeah, just casually discarding two cards a turn. So, Summoner's Pact, what could they be packing for? Nissa. Alright, so here comes the Acidic Slime. So, it enters the battlefield. Going target, right, our bridge. We're going to redirect this ability with our spell skite. And then we'll regenerate our spell skite. And 
And I think at this point they must know that they have nothing. Like, I believe we've now answered, yeah, all, all of their potential threats. So, epic battle. Codex Shredder gets the job done. Which, uh, you know, having a card draw engine or, you know, deck manipulation engine that also doubles as a win condition is like hot, right? It just gives your deck more versatility. Like, I certainly had games where I wasn't expecting like Pith the Needle and someone just Pith the Needled me on like Thopter Foundry and I was like, well, uh, here we are. All right, so this one has Thopter Foundry and Bridge. <coughs> like, Bridge and a few artifacts to play before it is usually just to keep on its own in my book. Uh, Thopter Foundry, I usually want a way to manipulate the deck in addition to the Foundry. So we're playing against Merfolk. Um, play this Canal since it has trouble being played later in the game. Uh, this bridge is really good against Merfolk. Their whole game plan is built around making their guys very big and unblockable. But uh, bridge punishes them for being big and, you know, we're not really into blocking anyway. I mean, not being able to block does mean that the Thopter Foundry is a lot worse. So, like, against a lot of these aggro decks, like Spirits or Humans, which are like kind of like aggro disruption decks. Uh, Thopter Foundry is just as good as the Ensnaring Bridge, but against Merfolk specifically, they can go past your Thopter Foundry. So unless you have the ability to make infinite Thopters, which sometimes you do, um, the the bridge half of the deck is is like radically the more powerful half of the deck. So we know we have an opal coming up, and that this opal isn't going to do much. Um, so we'll we'll very seriously consider turning this opal into a thopter. Uh, we do cast whir, and sometimes it's like very precise. And this guy, since he's after you cast the spell, you can't tap an artifact to pay for it. Uh, but they're getting. They're going to read Jerry, so we, we're not going to have the option to like turn this opal into a thopter and then just ambush this curse catcher. So we'll, we'll just we'll wait, that's fine. What we're going to be looking for is a turn where we can spend the opal to get another artifact out of our hand, uh, which is actually going to be now. So we're going to. Uh, play this ensnaring bridge, tap the first opal for half of the Thopter Foundry mana, and then, yeah, and they they can see the writing on the wall. Uh, some of these Merfolk decks play Echoing Truth in the main, but it's not common. So let's see, they're not targeting us, they're not casting too many spells in a turn. Pithy Needle is like just okay, it turns off their vials, which can really slow them down. Pithy Needle's not actually bad. Um, they're not playing any destroy effects, so we don't need Welling Jar. Uh, they don't really have any way of turning off our win cons. Like, we didn't see any white mana, so I don't think we need Tezzeret. Thopter Sword's a little on the weak side, since we need infinite Thopter Swords, so maybe we still want to be a Tezzeret deck instead of a Thopter's deck. Gives us a lot of cards to play with. Um... Like nine cards? Can we even fill out that many cards? I mean, we can like play two needles and a revoker and really get their vials. Uh, maybe we do we still want to be Thopters and Swords. I grab the Spellscape by accident. I'm not trying to take Spellscape out in this matchup. Okay, so I guess we'll keep the Ironworks since you need to have infinite to be relevant in this match. Two needles. We don't need a cage. And like, egoing them isn't that good since they just have so many different names of cards. So I think we'll just play it like this.
Um, so we have a, a bridge basically here and like zero, one, two casting costs. The opal will turn into a th third blue source. So this hand's close to perfect. They don't disrupt it with like, yeah, like curse catcher could slow it down by a turn. Uh, but we do another land, so that might not even be an issue. So player codex shutter. Um, yeah, if I needed to resolve the bottled cloister with a whir, I'd be nervous about shredding myself. But as it is, I think shredding myself gives me chances at free Swords of the Meek and free Faithless Lootings. Their deck has... Hey, Grisnet, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Glad you're enjoying this. Um, this, yeah, like it just gives me free cards. Their their deck has like so many redundant cards that we can't even like randomly shred something that's important to them. And you know, like this match should not come down to decking. We have Tesseret and. Um, Thopter Sword is win conditions, but like I think as you saw the previous match, like we, we can mill ourselves early in the game and then late in the game and still, you know, mill someone if that's if that's how it has to go down. Uh, so if they had, oh, that's interesting. Pithyneal can be decent on Curse Catcher. Uh, it's also good on Vial, but they haven't played a Vial here. So I'm gonna spell Sky. And then I think actually because this curse catcher can mess with our words, I'm gonna needle the curse catcher. It's a it's a pretty marginal needle, but um, you know, kind of like this late into the game, if they play a vial, it's it's not gonna help them. What they really want to do with the vial is like play the vial and then hold up mana to counter things, and it's it's a little too late for that. Um, and of course, like they have Mita Vault, but like when we were for Bridge, that's just going to handle the Mita Vault. So the scary potential card here is Spell Pierce. Uh, I think they frequently play Spell Pierce. These guys have Island Walk. I can't like flash anyone in, so I think I'm supposed to block with the Skyte. Just preserve maximum life. Um, a lot of like these. Blue prison decks like I'm playing uh, don't play Spellscape main, they play Welding Jar main. And, you know, I thought that seemed right at first. Um, okay, so are we playing around Spell Pierce? We have time, like they can play another Lord or two, and we won't die. Um, we don't have a fifth land. But we could cast Bottled Cloister, and they might pierce that, but if they don't, we're very likely to draw the land we need. If they have Echoing Truth, we can still absorb it with the Spell sky, so we won't lose our hand. I think playing Bottled Cloister here gives us the best chance of playing around Spell Pierce. Um, you know, it is kind of appealing to cast, like, Lantern plus Whir, um, since we get to, like, start messing with their hand. They probably decided that like the cloister is just a card draw spell, so they can save their counter magic for when it's relevant, which I think is the right line of thought. Um, but I think we have the chance to like now on two draws hit a land to go with this whir. We could also just naturally draw a bridge. Okay, they're, they're tapping out. So unless this is a truly scary spell that I haven't anticipated, I think we're gonna be in great shape. Rejury. Okay, so they'll get to untap their one land. Does it trigger for itself? Oh, it doesn't trigger itself. Sweet. So we'll take seven, and I think then just stabilize with the bridge and 
Because we have Spell Skite in play, I don't think Echoing Truth is going to be particularly relevant. I'll self mill. Still looking for like a Sword of the Meek or a Faithless Looting. Cool. So we didn't try another land, but since our opponent's tapped out, we don't have to worry about that. We probably would have been forced to go for it this turn anyway. So that's three, and then one, two, and three for the bridge. And then already all other guys are too big. Haha, <laughs> merfolk. Um, I'll play another Codex Shredder. I guess maybe I'll play Lantern. Alright, we don't care about their spreading seas. They can turn all these things into islands for all I care. Um, that spell scout on the top of our library is pretty exciting. Obviously, Echoing Truth would answer both spell skites, so we need something like Thopter Foundry, which would let us sacrifice one of the spell skites if it gets targeted by Echoing Truth, so that we don't have them both pop at once. But, you know, as it is, our opponent still has to come up with, like, two bounce spells to get through Ensnaring Bridge plus spell skite. So I guess, oh, I guess, I mean, we have a whir on top. So we're going to be able to whir for a Thopter Foundry. And with, like, Lantern plus Shredder, it's also, like, our opponent just can't find what they want. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. Hercules Recall. Oh. All right. Recall is perfect. Yeah, cool. Awesome. That is definitely like multiple bounce spells. So, all right. I think we do want Unmoored Ego. I forgot they played Recall. Recall's so good against us. Like Recall, Shatterstorm, Fracturing Gust, these all call for Unmoored Ego. So, let's see. You take out the ironworks. Get in the pithy needles. Like especially with them on the draw, hitting their vials can just really cripple their development. Does oh man, oh man, does which main orb target a player? Or Hercules recall. Looking it up. Return all artifacts target player owns to their hand. Okay, so I didn't realize this. Witch Bane Orb is awesome against Merfolk since it's a tutorable way to get Hexproof and stop Hercules Recall. Uh, I'll bring in this Revoker. It's like another thing that can name Vile or Curse Catcher. And. I think that's probably fine. I mean, we just need another card. I play this Turbo Orb. I guess Welding Jar just helps us empty our hand faster. So we're just on Tezzeret and Shredder as win conditions. But really, like, we're just building a prison. This hand's actually really weak. Maybe you shouldn't have kept it. Like, Needle's pretty marginal against them. I think I'm mostly gonna be leading on the Shredder to like, Shredder Library to find something meaningful. You know, if they do have a Vile Hand, we're gonna really slow them down. But they didn't. <laughs> File away over. I mean, it's random. It shouldn't matter. Okay, sweet. So we still found a war. I'm gonna shred myself. 
opponent's probably delighted by all the like premium cards we're pitching. Uh, so here, I'm still going to get Curse Catcher, because that could mess us up. And I think, like, Mutavolt. I guess I could probably still draw a vial and have it be relevant. Now, drawing it later than the first turn is really just super slow. And they might not even have them after we just, like, vile them game one. Or needle them game one. Alright, so they're, like, potentially holding up counter magic. So what I want to do is use this war on their turn and then cast the bridge on our turn. And they probably won't have enough mana to deal with both ends of that. Like, I mean, in theory, we could also just like sit back because we're in a winning position, but I th think it's right to like put this pressure on them. I mean, right, part of me wants to save this warrior for Witchbane Orb so that we can protect ourselves from Hercules. Right, so there's, oh man, it's a remand, even better. So we still get to use that for Wishbane Orb while also having taxed their mana. That was about as, like, that was perfect. So we can Whirr for Wishbane Orb. And they only have like two copies of Hercules Recall, but it's like very hard to lose if we can get a Witchbane Orb and a Spell Skite in play. Echoing Truth makes it so like the second Snaring Bridge isn't as valuable as it is in most matchups. Kira, interesting. So I think we're still on Shred ourselves. Let's think about that. Yeah, we can still find Faithless Looting, even if we don't have Sword of the Mink. Continue to uh, <laughs> shred away exactly the cards I want every time. <coughs> Alright, so we'll try a war in here. One, two, three. I guess I'll use the Shredder. I don't think there's likely to be like a pay one counter spell that they have. Cool. So we get our Witchbane Orb. And now we just need to find a Spell Sky. And we're probably in the clear. And they can't target us anymore, so they can't recall us. I have to add a Witchbane Orb to my. Sideboard notes versus Merfolk. I didn't really have Merfolk in my sideboard notes before because it's such a rare matchup. And like I've gotten blown out by Hercules Recall before. I didn't I didn't realize I had the tool all along in my sideboard. I guess this also works against um, Settle the Wreckage. I always like right. My thoughts about this card is usually that's like to protect me. Um, I haven't really considered the fact that it can also end up protecting my permanence. I don't usually care about a bunch of Thopters getting settled, and I don't know that like white control decks tend to play settle post board, but main deck, I think they often have it in their deck. Right, so they're just holding up one mana again. And I think because Echoing Truth is the most likely way that they have to balance our stuff, besides that recall, um, I'm okay risking this this ensnaring bridge by having the Bottled Cloister exile it. Right? Anything that's exiled with Bottled Cloister, when Bottled Cloister leaves play, you lose. Um, so like, you have to think pretty hard about whether you want to cast Bottled Cloister while you still have like useful resources in your hand. 
Um, you can get particularly blown out by echoing truth if like they're like echoing truth your thing and then echoing truth your modeled cloister after it's exiled your other cards. Uh, but I think they also only play like two echoing truths post board. Cool, so we found the spell skate. And even though the Tezzeret is a win condition, uh, I think the spell skate is really Um, right, th this matchup is more about building a prison than figuring out how to win. Like, we can win. Um, you know, if, if they can't bounce both ensnaring bridges, we're in great shape. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight permanents. Uh, Tezzeret does damage equal to twice the number of permanents. And we should expect that if they have an Echoing Truth, they'll cast it when we try and ultimate with Tezzeret, so they would end up like bouncing the spell skate. So we really want 11 artifacts to be in play when we fire off Tezzeret's ult. And we will try and resolve Tezzeret on this upcoming turn. Hopefully we draw another land so that we can play around Spell Pierce. I guess, I guess we're just going to start shredding our opponent. Like I think here we're just starting to think about if both of our Tezzerits get countered, we need a path to victory. Alright, did find a land. It's conceivable that we should wait. So we can play around Spell Pierce. They have two mana up, they can also have like negate. I'll fire off this looting. Alright, we don't need that. And I don't think Pithing Needle does a ton for us. I can play Lantern. That's gonna let us time our, our shreds better. We mostly just want to shred them. But we now have the chance to like shred on their echoing truths so that our um, our key cards are protected. So we're like when I need the right material, I like shredding myself. But since we have all the material that we need, we just need to shred them as like an alternate path to victory. Two and one, two, three. All right, so we didn't get a land before. One, two, three, four, five. All right, so I, I'm I'm going to be conservative with this Tesseret. I'm going to wait until I have six mana to cast him. And even though I have Faithless Looting, which could get rid of that extra land, um, I don't want to mill myself more until I get another Shredder. I mean, they can't have that many counter spells, and with the Shredders, we can't. They can't draw that many counter spells. We're probably fine. Like I'm probably being overly paranoid and should just be going directly for the win. Alright, so I'm gonna play the Spire of Industry. I'm gonna play the Mox Opal. <coughs> so now Tezzeret probably lives through like resolves through two counter spells. Assuming their spell pierces. If he has negates, obviously he doesn't. Okay, so Plus one, get this welding jar. Play the welding jar. And now we have a gajillion artifacts. I'm mean, gonna flash back this looting. And discard. 
Opal and looting. Alright. Have a whir on top, which is pretty great. So now we have 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which is the number of artifacts I wanted. <clears throat> and our opponent only has two cards. And we could whir for a 12th artifact, so even if they are able to remove two of our artifacts, Hazard's ult is going to kill them. Echoing Truth on the Ensnaring Bridge. So Spellskite is going to absorb that. We'll pay two life. Right, and they didn't have a second one, so we're good. I really like, right, so this deck kind of like lives and dies by hiding behind a bridge. And I really do like the way that the Lantern of Insight and Shredder kind of take away your opponent's ability to top deck to get out of that lock. Like, my strategy has been to just go super deep on Spell Skites and Welding Jars. Um, but like... I don't know that I need to be that deep on them if I also have this like deck manipulation engine. Um, like, right, so I think the people in the Lantern Control forums were like, you can't really go full on control without a bunch of lanterns, but it doesn't feel like I need a ton of lanterns, right? There's just like a few cards that I care about and um, you know, maybe if they have the ability to draw more cards a turn, I might need or want more lanterns. But generally, the decks that are building, drawing a few cards a turn, are incredibly vulnerable to Thopter Foundry. And so I think maybe that's where they're coming from, is that, you know, they need all these lanterns because they can't be proactive with Thopter Foundry. But I think because this deck can be proactive, it doesn't need to be as controlling. Though obviously in that last configuration it got very controlling. So I'll keep this. It has half of a Thopter Sword combo. And it has a... You know, this is like, right, even though Codex Shredder, it could just be a blank card that was an artifact that cost one. And it would be enabling us to war for two on turn three. And that's, I mean, I think that's part of why Sam suggested this. I've been playing just a pile of Pithing Needles because they were, they felt like the best one drop that I could find. And he's like, you know, if you're just playing random artifacts, uh, let me suggest these like kind of awesome artifacts that I've had good experiences with. Um, you know, obviously like Lantern was a top tier deck for a long time. And it's only kind of the arrival of some fair decks that have made it weaker than it was in the past. So, it, you know, it makes sense that, like, just finding a slightly different shell as a home for it could, like, be very top tier. I guess we're going to want this opal, so I'll cast it now in case my opponent has Thalia. Like, in the dark, uh, if your opponent is playing white or red, um, like, burn-colored red, you just want to play your, your cheap artifacts as soon as you can, rather than hiding the information, because Thalia or uh, Eidolon of the Rebel can, like, really, really punish you for holding those cards. Uh, so this opponent looks like they're on Ad Nauseam. And I guess we want to shred them. Like, their deck relies on having a bunch of, like, specific cards that they play at specific times. So, Lightning Storm, we can Pithing Needle. Ad Nauseam gets thrown off by Damping Sphere. Uh, 
like, Thought Pursuit's only really going to work well against that if it goes infinite. So uh, this war really needs to be for like Quark Clan Ironworks. And I think I want to save it otherwise. Like, I think I'm going to need to interact with their combo more than like getting a few Thopters could possibly race with them. So, you know, getting in some spell sky beats because I just think that I need to save this war. I could be wrong. Maybe if instead of playing the spell sky, I'd play the sword on turn two, turn three, I could have word and made a Thopter. And then this next turn, I can make like five Thopters. It'd be like a three turn clock. Right, they didn't play a Pentad Prism. So maybe it's still like feasible. But like, the Thopters have a hard time, right? Like they can play Angel's Grace and Phyrexian on Life and each of those like buys them an extra turn. Players can't get counters, counters can't be put on artifacts, creatures, enchantments, or lands. Right, maybe this is not ad nauseum. Unless that's just like a pre-board hate card against infect. I think I missed shredding there. Um, I'm definitely looking for the right card for myself. So I will, I will loot here. Obviously the best thing we can find is Thopter Foundry. And I found an Ironworks. That's exciting. So we can discard Spire and Bridge. And if they don't go off, we can whir then Ironworks. It'd be better if we could cast the Ironworks this turn. Like, what if we discard, oh, yeah. It, I think this is just how it has to be. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty sick draw. Oh, uh, yeah, I can still whir for two or one, which are, I think, the values that save me from most of the bad stuff I'm imagining this opponent wants to do to us. I got, gotta make sure that attacking with the spell sky doesn't take us off of the right whir value. seen any chat. I'm kind of suspicious that OBS is somehow not showing me people chatting. So I'm going to check my actual Twitch page to see if that's still accurate. I guess it is. All right. Dillic Tutor. Sure. Nevermore. <laughs> okay, I don't really know what our opponent is. Maybe there's some kind of like pillow for it deck. But uh, we're definitely going to present them with infinite Thopters and see what they do about that. So we're going to get our Thopter Foundry. And then play this Glimmer Void, play this Ironworks. Uh, shred them, because why not? And then we'll attack with the Spell Skite. And now we can kind of 
at instant speed make any number of Thopters and get any amount of mana. If we hadn't shredded them, we could have also like gotten any card out of our graveyard. I don't think there's anything we really want out of our graveyard at this moment. So Phyrexian on life, okay. So we're not totally tripping. Um, they are an ad nauseum deck. They just have some like weird utility. Um, so we mostly just care about Laboratory Maniac. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to make some Thopters. And use this three trick. Uh, and we're probably going to use the Shredder to get back um, War of Invention. And War for Damping Sphere so that they can't cast all of their spells. Uh, we can make enough life that we don't really care about the um, the damage aspect of their deck. So I haven't got to play this matchup a lot because I think it's not in the like super competitive metagame. That's kind of one of the joys of a. Uh, usually, like the first time I make any change, I play in the the friendly leagues. Um, just this, like, force of habit, I guess. And they definitely have, like, a different metagame, right? It's just, like, people are playing the decks that they love. And I think it's actually pretty important, though, because, you know, if you're going to play at, like, you know, an LGS tournament or... Uh, you know, you don't have buys at a GP, like, you'll run into these things. And getting reps in against obscure decks, like, helps you a lot. Like, I think Modern's all about knowing the intricacies of each matchup with your deck. I mean, it's also about choosing the right deck, right? Like, sometimes you do need to change decks because your deck is poorly positioned and, you know, like... Right, Dredge recently really shook up the metagame. It made it so that, um, you know, interactive decks were in a much worse place and, you know, made it, like, interactive decks being in a worse place, made it so that, like, combo decks are in a better place. And if you're a combo deck that's faster than Dredge, um, you know, you're in a good place in the metagame. But, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, there, there are pitfalls in testing processes. I think this happens most often to Pro Tour teams where they think, like, ah, this metagame will be, like, these six decks because, um, you know, th these are the best performing decks currently in the metagame and people will definitely play, you know, the best decks. And... Uh, it causes two things to happen. One, you know, in a diverse format like modern, uh, you might just never learn how to play against some less played decks. But also, um, you know, it could be that a deck that's not really played is very well positioned against whatever's in the current metagame. And, like, that happened once... I think it was like Pro Tour Portland, or maybe, oh no, it was actually, it was a Pro Tour to Seattle. Uh, Stanislaw Siska won the PT playing Eggs, and, right, Second Sunrise hadn't been banned yet, Eggs was very good. Let's see, we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 power, so we need to sacrifice just a couple more Thopters here. And... 
uh, right, he played Eggs, and Eggs was just not on most people's radar. But, um, you know, so I don't know how many people know the, the history of modern, but Gavin Verhey, who now works at Wizards, was just a, a very enthusiastic magic player. Uh, I remember when he, like, built his own sets and, like, invited people over for little releases. It's 15 and 17, so we have enough power of Thopters. So I'm going to untap and just get in here with these Thopters. Uh, ooh, we got the Pithy Needle. So, all of these are going to attack. Oh, wait, with Solemnity. I get it now. With Solemnity, they can't gain counters, so... These Thopters are meaningless. So you have zero or less life, all damage is dealt to you as though the source had infect. Got it. So this is just a... Oh, that's actually super sweet. Uh, so we need to deck them. And we can... Let's see, we, we can whir for Damping Sphere. Because so they're going to try and win, right? Lightning Storm. So they're going to like deck themselves. We're going to trick them into decking themselves. I think that's our plan. I mean, either that or we're just going to shredder them and actually deck them. Um, right. So if they go for... If they go for their combo... Nevermore. I guess we have to war now, because they're probably going Nevermore on war. But if they do it on Shredder... This is a pretty tough call. And we have the one Damping Sphere, so we really need to find it. We have a bunch of other Shredders, but if they name Shredder... And then Nevermore on Shredder, then we don't have any win conditions left. So the real question is, do we think that they're... I mean, we actually don't even know what they are. I don't want to lose my Shredder here. Even though they're playing a lot of cards that make them look like they're... It's like, ad nauseum, it's not clear that they are. The Solemnity on Life Combo is pretty sweet, though. Uh, Matt FM1, thanks for the follow. Um, so anyway, like, Gavin uh, just created this format because... He thought it'd be fun. Um, you know, he called it overextended. It was when, like, it was clear Wizards didn't want to support extended any longer. Um, you know, he started it, it included a couple of extra sets, so, like, Counterspell was part of it. But, um, you know, like, Bloodbraid and Ancestral Visions were both legal. Alter the Brood. Okay, so they, <laughs> they think we're a different deck, which is great. And we just want to find, I think, a bunch of codex shredders here and shred them out. Okay, so we found another whir. And uh, I'm worried that they're going to find something like, let's see, pay one. So we'll just get another Codex Shredder. Yeah, I'm worried that they're going to play something like uh, Leyline of Sanctity so we can't target them. So I need to shred them as hard as possible uh, before they, you know, successfully turtle up. Dovescape, wow. Yeah, this is sweet. They're like some very deep uh, artifact controller deck. I'm super jazzed to be playing against this. Like, getting to see modern decks that I've never seen before is, like, one of my favorite things in the world. Um, so anyway, Gavin ran this for, like, this, these tournaments. Is this just another dubscape? Access of Mortality. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may have two target players exchange life totals. Alright, so putting them at zero was a mistake. 
we need which spanner orb immediately. Right, you two target players, yeah, it has to target. So we can witch spoon orb to get out of this. Um, right, we can use the a codex shredder to return word of invention and then were for witch bane orb so that we can't be targeted by this axis of mortality. So there's that. Uh, five. Oh, uh, I guess we'll make mana by sacrificing Thopters. And then we'll use the sh Shredder to return Word of Invention. Use this four mana. And this. Thanks for the follow, Tran. Welcome to the stream, all of you. Yeah, this is amazing. Um, which band are doing a lot of work today? I mean, there's lots of effects that just target you as a player. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. And we'll get our Witchbane Orb. There we go. Okay. No mortality for us today. Um, so at the beginning of this overextended format that Gavin made, you know, he hosted a bunch of just like player organized tournaments on Modo. Right, like you, you signed up on Facebook, like your pairings were on Facebook, and um, like it, it became emergent very quickly that Eggs was a super powerful deck in the format. Like if you couldn't, if you didn't have Graveyard Hate, uh, you were just dead. Right, like you know, and like Hypergenesis was also like a very powerful deck in the format. And um, let's see, Enduring Ideal, yes. So they just get an enchantment every turn. Uh, you can't cast spells. All right, so they're actually getting two spells a turn. No detention sphere. We can redirect with our spells guide. <laughs> uh, an epic battle of toolbox decks. Uh, so that's fine. I got our spell skate. They have like, let's see, Oblivion Ring or something. We're gonna have to pop our other Codex Shredder. Oh, we got the Leyland of Sanctity. If they only have one, we might actually win this thing. Uh, we're getting, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, okay. Uh, making sure we have enough mana to actually cast War if we re retrieve it. I'll discard these lands. Bottle Cloisters, I think, I think it's fine. Oh, we can actually just play it. Yeah, sure, let's do that. Uh, Ironworks, sacrifice a Thopter. Ironworks to sacrifice a Thopter. Play this Cloister, right? Because with their ideal, they're picking up two cards a turn. And if we're shredding them, they're going through three cards a turn. This way, we're only going through two cards a turn, so we're still favored to deck them. And we'll see. We'll see what enchantments they fetch themselves from here. So, right. So, at the, at the beginning of Overextended, which is really the beginning of Modern, like, everybody knew you just had to have, like, Graveyard Hate. And then, um, you know, like, Pro Tour Philadelphia happened, and it was all these like big mana green decks that used uh, was it uh, Cloud Post, and 
um, you know, like storm decks that didn't really use the gra graveyard because um, I think Past in Flames wasn't legal yet. And so they were still using like Pyromancer's Ascension. All right, they have a second Detention Sphere. So here we go. We're going to fire off this Codex Shredder. So Ironworks. Eat some Thopters. And then we'll activate the Codex Shredder. Grabbing a War of Invention. Paying with this mana. And then we're going to use the word to get another spell skite, which will get detained. Pay this one mana, and then tap these, so we're good. It's pretty amazing being able to like have interaction of your choice, even while under Baldwin Cloister. And so here's a spell skite. And then we'll pay two life to redirect the effect. We have infinite life anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, if they have a third detention sphere, could be in trouble. Um, we need to like either naturally draw another spell skite, draw another codex shredder, or a war. We don't have any like destroy effects. You know, uh, Spine of Ishsaw is a card that I always want to find a space for my 75 because it's good in these like super grindy type decks. Alright, so we did find a Codex Shredder. So if they have like the full set of detention spheres, we're still alive. And this is this is the reason I like Bottled Cloister a lot. Bottled Cloister, um, when you're you kind of like have a lock in, but your opponent's fighting you, being able to draw two cards a turn, um, you know, greatly increases your chance of finding the cards that you need. Um, I mean, they must still feel like they have live answers because they're not scooping. Uh, obviously, we've eaten two of our shredders. If we have to eat all of our shredders, we could lose to decking. They just not play anything? No, no it's on the stack. We should put a always yield on this one. Play a line of sanctity. Oh, that's interesting. Like, I wanted to shred them, but didn't know if I could. I think I have to, like, Thopter Foundry our own Bald Cloister now. Oh, we need a Pithing Needle for that thing. Okay. Okay. Why do they have an Undoing Ideal in their graveyard? How do they get rid of their own enduring ideal? Okay, so we don't want to shred ourselves. The shredder, I guess we just want Pithing Needle now for Mistville planes. How did they get rid of their own enduring ideal? So we'll get this war. We'll war for one. Get a pithing needle on Mistville planes. And then 
then we'll sacrifice the bottled cloister so we stop drawing cards. So I have another enduring idea up. Oh, it's a sorcery, I see, that's why it's in our graveyard. Can they just fail to find though? Like if they're not forced to do this, they must be able to fail to find. So like, Greater Oromancy, other enchantments have Shroud. So they did get something. So they have to get something like twice more for us to deck them. Assuming they have no other threats. So they just have the two detention spheres. They don't have a path to defeating us. But I think, I think they're failing to find here. So we might just have to scoop this. enchantment card. So we're just like one card ahead of them in decking. So we'll, we'll concede. Interesting. Uh, so anyway, yeah, like playing against obscure decks is sweet, right? Like you learn all sorts of valuable things. Um... I guess we want Unmoored Ego here. This is like a perfect Unmoored Ego deck. We want alternate win conditions. Spellscape was pretty good. We don't need Ensnaring Bridge. I don't really have any creatures, and I don't think they're gonna like get us by putting them in here. Mistful Plains, we want a Pithing Needle, but I don't really think we saw anything else that was like Pithing Needleable. Whereas like the D-spheres were definitely like, we want these spell skites. Uh, which main orb we want? Ironworks. Yeah, going infinite is good. I think we can just trim one needle and have one needle in the deck. Yeah, this seems fine. So we saw a lot of their artifacts, so we have a lot of ideas about unmoored ego targets. We could, you know, hitting Phyrexian on life seems like a strong possibility. Like that seemed like the Solemnity on life combo is one that they're using to stop creatures. Okay, um, we'll keep this, like we get to loot into Sword of the Meek, and we have our answer for Mistville Plains to like enable our decking them plan. So we'll discard the sword, and 
Probably don't need this canal. Yeah, that seems right. So turn two, we'll be able to play the softer foundry. And then, I guess I have to eat the needle as a like cheaper sword. Usually I'd be leery of eating our only needle, but because we have the shredders, we can get anything back. Which is, I really like. Um, the shredders feel a little bit like partway between Inventor's Fair and, you know, or we'll just have another sword. So, blue, black. You know, we don't see an ego here or, or a war, which I would have kind of liked. All right, so all these things have shroud. We weren't actually about to destroy any of their uh, enchantments anyway, but I guess if they have two greater oromancies, it shuts off something like Spine of Ishsaw, which if we had here, we would have most certainly brought in. I guess we should expect rest in peace and like stony silence. So it's probably gonna be this Tezzeret who's gonna have to win the game. Sorry, I didn't fully eat breakfast, so, you know, like a small child, I'm eating this delicious peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So, you know, let's just start beating down with Thopters, and we'll just have to see where we get. Like, without an ego, we don't really have a lot of options to control their lines of play, and we're in a, like, reactive position. Nevermore. I'm guessing they named Were this time. Like after seeing us use Were to like specifically counter each of the enchantments that they wanted to play. I really like Nevermore. I mean it's basically a, a white ego. It can't hit lands, but this kind of card is very powerful. There are a lot of decks in modern that revolve around like one specific card. And if you can, you know, disable that card. It's very hard for them to play that deck. So like, right, if they play Nevermore against, say, like, Crook Clan Ironworks, naming Ironworks, it's like a very strong line. Their deck really slows down after that. Or like if you play it against a Primeval Titan deck. Yeah, word of invention. Um, yeah, for a long time I've thought about building like this kind of like white enchantment Control. I think at a GP I ran into Adrian Sullivan and a friend of his. A friend was like, you know, a pro from back in the day and like had just a sweet pillow fort deck. Oh man, we got the end where you go. Alright, well first we'll send our Thopter in here. And next I think we take Phyrexian on life. Like they might have other ways to stop us from winning. Like a detention sphere here would be pretty harsh. Stony Silence would be another reasonable option. As would like Leyline of Sanctity. But Unlife cuts off so many of our paths to victory. I guess, I mean, we are sitting on a Tezzeret. We could play Detention Sphere. Or Stony Silence. Eh, we'll go with Unlife. 
I have one in hand. I have Canton, I like Tutor. And then let's just look at I have Leyland of Sanctity. Actually, I'm just going to screenshot this for later. So if I want to build this deck myself, I can. Form of the Dragon, Dove Escape, 3D Spheres. Only one more Nevermore. Okay. Probably makes them play feel substantially more nervous. Uh, yeah, so this friend of Adrian's had I think it was like sphere sphere of safety that had spurred him to build this white control deck. He was playing like ghostly prison type cards to stop aggro instead of on life plus. Um, solemnity, but those both seem like viable paths to stopping damage. I like that. Um, I like that going with um, Phyrexian on life, like deals with non-creature sources of damage as well as creature sources. Like that seems a little bit stronger than Ghostly Prison to me. So they're setting up their detention sphere. I'm not sure whether they'll go for the Thopter Foundry or the Swords. If we play this Tezzeret, it will force their hand to go for Tezzeret. But I think I actually want to build up, like, get like one last wave of Thopters before they probably exile this Thopter Foundry. And I want this mana to be open so they can't just de-sphere the swords. Um, right, because if they choose sword, I can just sacrifice it in response with the Thopter Foundry. Having a bunch of artifacts in play will mean that Tesseret will just be like immediately lethal. Uh, after he plus one him, so he'll take one turn to become lethal. So they went for the sword. Big mistake. Rookie error. I definitely want to go for the Thopter Foundry since it can't dodge removal in quite the same way. I mean, I understand it's appealing to go for the thing that where there's two of them. So I don't think like opponent was crazy to try that. Just, you know, a mistake. But that's like one of the joys. Also, like we're playing a pretty rogue deck. Um, they're having the same kind of like discovery process as we are of finding out like exactly what it is they're dealing with. You know, playing at the GP Portland last weekend, we had a, a lot of card reading. Like, lots of people, like, kind of knew what sort of the Minicum Thopter Foundry did, but hadn't seen them. And, you know, good, good tournament play is if you don't know exactly what a card does, read it. Uh, four, five, six, seven. So we're putting our opponent down to three. If we play this Tezzeret, they're going to have the problem where, like, they're dead to Thopters or Tezzeret and probably can't deal with both. So. We will give them the impossible choice. Plus Tezzeret so that he'll have. Four counters. No, I'll just get a, I guess a spell sky. It's possible that's not the right thing here. Like having a backup thopter foundry could somehow be right, but maybe even a backup sword. Yeah, I think they're probably just dead. Like I don't think there's, I don't think there's a single card that gets them out of here. I sure hope there isn't. At least they could have like double detention sphere and get like all of the Thopters and Tesseret. We knew we know they brought in a third detention sphere. But we saw their hand two turns ago, so they'd have had to like just draw like D sphere, D sphere. The Shrine of Nykthos is pretty nice in this deck. Like, right, they're putting a lot of permanence in play. So they're certainly getting to ramp their mana considerably. You know, make that enduring ideal, like, 
actually a reasonably castable card. Sweet. So we only have four minutes. Could be enough, could kind of wind up short. Um, I think we're happy with our configuration. And I don't remember seeing Stony Silence in their deck. Uh, we'll play this. This Unmoored Ego is, I think, one of the best cards we can have against them. So we have to decide what are we likely to Ego for. Unlife was fine. We had like a direct threat then. Um, they have two Nevermores, that's not a ton. So it's probably not Nevermore that we want to go after. We probably want to go after a card that like turns off a lot of our, our, our win conditions. I guess this Lantern might help us. Oh wow, we're just going to Ego them over and over again. That's kind of exciting. Like, right, that ley line of sanctity turns off. Oh, they do have rest in peace. Oh. I don't want to loot any of these cards away, so I'm pretty sure I don't want to loot in here. Look at that rest in peace. So like Sanctity, or I guess Detention Sphere can't hit anything yet. They will play a Nevermore if they have it. So if they don't Nevermore us for Ego, we know that they don't have it. And then we can just Shredder the rest of them forever. So I think we go for Sanctity here. Um... Possibly the only way we can win fast enough with, is with Tezzeret, like, making a lot of probably takes longer than we have. Alright, Detention Sphere, sure. Alright, they got rid of our Shredder. Seems reasonable. So we'll take away their Leyland of Sanctity. Sanctity out. So they have the solemnity. So combat is just going to be out of the question. I guess we could take away the other half of that combo. Um. Yeah, Tesseract makes them lose life. So... Um... Oh man, uh, echoing... No, no, it's not an echoing card. Um, enduring. Ideal. Okay. Uh, what else could stop Tezra? Sure, double solemnity. We'll loot. I would really like to find another land in this ironworks. Man, they really want us to do this Thopter Sword combo. So if we had enough time here, we could actually just go infinite on swords. We know that they don't have 
the Phyrexian on life. As Kanta isn't going to help them. So I think if we didn't run out of time, we'd win here. Easy. Like we could probably, yeah, we, we know that their top card doesn't save them. And we can just Dr. Foundry, this Lantern of Insight. And we know that the next card isn't relevant, so we don't have to ego them. This rest in peace doesn't stop us because we make infinite thopters this turn. And yeah, this is just gonna be too slow for Moto, unfortunately. But you get the idea, right? Like, we would get there. So I'll concede because we obviously can't do it in time, but a uh, pretty sweet matchup. So looking at our deck list, pretty happy with it. I think here I want to try playing with Grid instead of Tesseret in the sideboard because of Blood Moon and Kataki and Gaddictig. My idea here is that like the Codex Shredder plus Lantern is about as good at helping us find the right top decks as Tesseret, and we just need an alternate win condition. Um, I'm going to take a moment to update the stream decker with this list, and then we'll jump into a competitive key with this. So we'll export Thopter Lantern in a text format. And then I'll jump over to stream decker. And upload a new deck. New <laughs> variant number 30 of Thopters. Uh, throw on this Thopter Lantern list. Mark that it's not really a white deck. Set it as a current deck. Okay, so now. Oh wow. So I apologize to everyone. Um, for some reason, OBS hasn't been showing me the chat, so I've been ignoring all of your commentary, and I am so sorry. Uh, I don't know why OBS did that to us, but I'm going to pop out my, my chat here so I can actually see it. Um, I love talking to people, and seeing that people are talking and I missed it all makes me really sad. Um, pop out. Okay. So now the chat should just be on top of OBS. Okay, so if you made a comment or you had a question and I didn't answer it, A, super sorry. B, if you say something now, uh, I should see it. That explains why I wasn't seeing my own bot, like, telling me about cards when I was like, tell me about this card, bot. Okay, so jumping into some more games. Um, 
play with Thopter Lantern. It's pretty nice. Um, you know, I like brewing decks. Sometimes the decks aren't very good, and I end up burning all my play points on them. But, uh, you know, playing a list that's actually decent, getting to, like, go infinite on play points is, like, a perk. Uh, still the water. Have you found the blend of Thopter Lantern to be better than either strategy alone? So, let's see what I like to play. Um, I haven't played enough with this, uh, with the Lantern parts to know whether they're improvement. Um, but my instinct so far is probably yes. Like, um, my worst matchups are like, KCI and Grixis were. Um, I think with Shredders, I would actually win game one against Grixis were, which is pretty interesting to me. Also, I definitely shouldn't have kept his hand. Um, these like four drops are really much better in our like in our deck. Um, our record today, uh, three and one. Uh, I guess we lost that last game technically in time, so maybe we were two and two. Yeah, that's right. Um, and like this deck doesn't really have any other bad matchups. Like, but you can lose against some other decks to like specific cards, and so I think being able to shred your opponent for those cards like feels like it should be good. Um, so, it looks like we're playing against Blue-White Control. The card that we're going to need the most is Thopter Foundry. Like, uh, I do think that Thopters really enhance the Lantern strategy. I think, like, everyone who talks about Lantern says that, like, Blue-White Control is their worst matchup. And it was a matchup that I thought was going to be bad. And also, like, people who play, like, Salt Stacks or, like, you know... Grixis controller or whatever you call it. Um, also think that this like blue matchup is a pretty bad matchup. Uh, but and I, I right so I thought it was gonna be bad for me since my deck is based on those two decks. But by adding um, like were or like were like for Thopter Foundry, uh, they suddenly like have a lot of trouble with what we're doing. Um, so like I think we. I think the matchup's slightly favorable, maybe even moderately favorable. Um, you wonder if Experimental Frenzy would be good against Blue-White. So Experimental Frenzy <clears throat> is like a very good card in a match where they're trying to use Attrition against you. Um, Blue-White is a deck that is trying to use Attrition against you. So... Um, Frenzy is, like, possibly well-positioned. Uh, the problem with Frenzy is... I don't know, we like to be hellbent. And so, let's see, we have a Thopter Foundry, but we don't need this second Opal. Ironworks can let the Foundry go infinite, so we like that. But we don't need it to go infinite in this matchup. And we're not even sure if this Foundry is going to resolve. We could get rid of the extra land. But if we resolve the foundry, lands are really nice. Though, I guess the ironworks is better than a land. Alright, so we'll discard that. Um, so they could have a negate. Sometimes they have main deck negate. You know, or a logic knot. Oh, wow. It resolved. Okay. Uh, that resolving is pretty sweet. We obviously still don't have a sword. But, um, right, having a spell skit in play, it's, now we have, like, layers of protection. It's going to be pretty hard to interact with. Uh, Terminus, sure. So they're going to cast Terminus. We're going to get like the one point of life by sacrificing our spell skite. Um, 
you know, it might seem like the life doesn't matter, but sometimes there are some beatdowns that happen here. Uh, Trent says, the shredders let you keep gas on top of your deck also, which is neat. Yeah, it's super neat. Like, any match which goes long, the shredders seem like they increase your, like, the power of your draws. Also, like, you get to, like, wreck your opponent's, like, draw power. So they're going for the top of our deck. Uh, I think with the Faithless Looting in our graveyard, that's kind of dubious. Uh, Full Metal Tezzeret. Cool to see you keeping trying out new things with this deck. How do you feel about the Lantern Mix? Uh, I'm really enjoying the Lantern Mix. Like, um, my concern is that it'll hurt us early uh, against like very fast decks. And I think it should help us late against... Um, Like any deck that's interactive or yeah, like mostly interactive decks and like decks that bring in a bunch of like shatters and like where it becomes interactive in games two and three. And I don't know, like not having bobbles hasn't felt bad yet. Alright, so we found our sword of the meek. I'm gonna discard this other looting. Which may nor I thought was irrelevant in this matchup, but I've come to the realization that it actually stops them. Oh, no, no, it doesn't stop Cryptic Command. Cryptic Command is each of your opponents. So the Witch Bane Orb is actually pretty useless. It could stop, like, an ultimate from a Planeswalker if things are going really badly for us. So I don't want to just, like, discard it out of hand. Oh. Okay, so this Teferi... Wow, they're drawing a card. How greedy. I would want to get rid of this Thopter Foundry stat if I were them. Uh, still, the weather says perhaps this build could do with one and two copies of Search for His Canta. Uh, I don't want to always tr yield to his triggers. Um, I found it to be incredibly useful for finding combo pieces, boost in mana after seven cards, etc. I might trim copies of Bridge or one of four drops. Something mean clunky and get stuck in our hand. So. Every single one of the four drops is not something I want in my hand, but um, right, let me think about this turn. If the Ironworks resolves, we get infinite Thopters, which they could Wrath away. Um, we have a second Thopter Foundry. I think we definitely want to attack Tezzeret. Or Teferi. Oh, ho, ho. this is so good for us. Because now I think they don't have mana to counter the, the Ironworks. I guess, I guess they're probably still getting exiled the Thopter Foundry. And they could have, like, Cryptic Command mana next turn. So maybe it's just better to make four Thopters. If we had, like, one more artifact, it'd be truly amazing. So it looks like game, but we actually, we don't have, like, an extra artifact to sacrifice. So we don't get to just go off here. Um, so I guess still the water... Yeah, Orb does stop Jace from targeting us. Um, so, like, Search for Kanta, I think, is an interesting card. Costing two is a fortune, and not being an artifact is a huge liability. Um, yeah, putting a ton land target on top of its owners. Okay, sure. Damping Sphere doesn't do that much. So we just have to assume that they have Cryptic Command here. And what we really want is a turn where we can set up Double, double Thopter Foundry. We can cast this Orb. Because, like, I don't think they're going to want to use their counter magic on this. Uh, 
Why did I not sack the sword, play the codex, and go infinite? Well, not because I'm not as smart as you. That would have been an amazing line of play. I should have definitely done that. I yeah, that would have just been that would have been game. That would have been beautiful. Um, yeah, then we'd have them, like, forced to use all their cryptics to interact. So, so I think the answer is, like, uh, as Kanta is, like, decent, but it's not what I want to do. So right now, they put Thopter Foundry third from the top. We drew a card, so it's second from the top. So if we shred ourselves, it should be our top card. So we'll... Do they just... Yeah. So I think we shred ourselves, and then we can have double Thopter Foundry. And then we can be smart. Sweet, we got a second sword. And then we'll draw here. So blue, black. First stop your foundry. Eats a cryptic. They're drawing a card. Second stop your foundry. No, they have a negate. Sad. All right. Um, yeah, thopters are awesome. You can you try to revise something if that's of any consequence. It is. I think we'll probably want to like shred to rebuy thopter foundry. Uh, Escanta is pretty powerful, and between like Escanta and Jace, they can go off pretty hard. Um, we could sacrifice, like, the orb and the shredder. No, we can't sacrifice the shredder if we want to use the shredder. So what are you going after here? It's got to be the ironworks, right? So I guess here we want to use the ironworks. Sacrifice an artifact to get two mana. Sacrifice the sword. Sacrifice itself. We'll get our foundry back. Man, well, not. I wish I pursued your line. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure the only line that wins the game here is if they time out. Um, probably true. Uh, this line isn't bad though. If this. Uh, foundry resolves and the spell skate resolves. They have another counter. Yeah, so the, the, like the key in these matchups is like they find the tools that they need to lock you out. Especially if they have like Jace. Right, we'll, we'll scoop here. Uh, Jace and his Kanta going. Um, but if we get like a quick foundry. It can be radically different. So, I guess this player, yeah, when they have all three of their engines online, pretty hard, close to hard lock. Agreed. I like Unmored Ego in this matchup. I don't really like Ensnaring Bridge against them. Uh, I do like Pithing Needles against them quite a bit. Like, it hits Teferi and it's Kanta and Jace. Don't really need Damping Sphere, don't really need Witchbane Orb. 
Um, keeping the ironworks in means we can go infinite. Uh, but my expectation is that they're going to try and turn our artifacts off. Yeah, grid is amazing here. It also pings their planeswalkers. I guess spell skate, they're probably going to stony silence us, so like having a bunch of spell skates. We probably like want however many aren't like excessive. Revoker, jar. Oh, maybe we just want these spell skates, and that's. We want two spell skates. Revoker's an extra needle. Spell skate stops cryptic command. I guess I could see like splitting them one and one. I like that. Um, I mean, it's possible that like Ironworks is overkill, but infinite is infinite. Um, Full Metal Tesser says the one drops are nice with with being able to whir early consistently and bobbles usually always seem pretty meh. Yeah, I agree. Bobbles seem kind of meh and like a one drop is almost as good. Uh, did want to try out Chromatic Stars. They help mana fixing when running three color like Eugrixis and I run Bug for trophies and decays. So I have tried out Chromatic Star. It it just seems like an expensive bobble, and at this point, I'm not even sure that bobble is the card that I want. Um, some people on the Tesserator forums are playing with like full sets of uh, pirate, or not pirate, uh, playing with Nihil spell bombs. The Nihil spell bomb seems like a better chromatic star to me. I'm going to shred myself looking for like a Sword of the Meek or more Faithless Lootings. And here I'll play Lantern so we can start full on messing with them. <laughs> Ego's going to be pretty good. And we have a few more lands than we need, so I don't mind looting here. Oh, that's actually a little awkward. I want one more land. And we don't have a sword yet. I think I'm going to pitch the founder and keep the grid. Like, even though foundry is amazing against them, they can get Stony Silence. Maybe that's wrong. Maybe we're supposed to keep the Foundry. Being able to like keep an eye on the top of their deck is pretty sweet. You think it's right to keep Grid, Epic Contingency versus Stony? Yeah. Uh, we're definitely going to want to. Do I want a second Shredder? I don't think so. Shredder's good, but it's not exactly what we're looking for right now. So I think we'll shred ourselves. And then we'll shred the sword off the top. Like, this interaction seems awesome. Uh, do I want an Ego Stony Silence? Like, we don't need to Ego Stony Silence. I kind of want an Ego Cryptic Command. I guess since we have another s uh, Ego coming, we could wait. I actually kind of want to resolve this grid while they're tapped out. I don't know, Chat, what do you think? Should we go for like Cryptic Command or Grid? Um, <laughs> disagreement. Eagle will give me more information on future turns. I think taking them off of. I mean, because they can also have like Rest in Peace, so like Stony Silence alone doesn't fix the problem. Though I guess we do have this active Shredder. Uh, they would have cast it already if they have it, so they, they don't have it yet. So I think we're casting Grid. Stony does stop Shredder. I don't think they have it, though. 
Like, I'm pretty sure if you have it in your hand there, you just slam it. Also, as Kanta makes the shredder a lot worse. Uh, I guess, no, I guess it's still fine, like, they still mill it, and we can still respond to their draw step. So I guess we're just stopping on both players' turns to shred. Detention Sphere. Well, that's no fun. So now I think we have to ego on Cryptic Command. I think we have reasonable evidence that they don't have answers. I mean, we could also go for, I guess, Jace. <laughs> so many egos. Like, Jace... <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go for Jace here. We don't have a Pithy Needle. We're going on our next Needle to go for his Kanta. Uh, Jace totally wrecks our Codex Shredder. Jace the Mind Sculptor. Okay, so they have one. They have Terminus, Disdainful Stroke, Opt. And they have three Cryptics in their deck. They have a Gideon of the Trials, so we might need that grid. Um, the other grid, Teferi, Surgical Extraction, three copies of Rip. Okay. No Cryptics in hand, that's good information. So, I don't know, like, maybe this Codex Shredder is awesome here. Like, their hand is pretty garbage. Uh, we're just going to be able to ego them for most of their good cards. Like, if we grab Stony Silence... I mean, it's kind of weird. Ego might be just a lot worse if um, we have this Insight Shredder combo. Like, I'm used to just fearing the top of my opponent's deck. But being able to shred the top of their deck... It's glorious, man. Uh, it just sucks that he's basically going to start impulsing every turn if we have to drop too many cards with Shredder plus Escanta. Yeah, I do agree. Opponent impulsing frequently is not worn to you. So if we Shred... Oh, shit. I mean, he has the opt in hand, so we couldn't get that card away from him. Well, we should have, we should have made him make the play. I guess we could have lanterned in response also. I should have left him with the surgical, it's a dead card if it with rest in peace. Um So we like what to fairy next? commands. Fill it opt now. Yeah, I can see why like people don't like this like matchup for lantern decks. Also if anyone say like 
experienced Lantern Pro, forgive me for uh, you know, making whatever newbie Lantern errors, errors I make. Um, I have a very good idea how I want to play the Thopter Sword half of this deck, and not as much of a good idea of how to... So I think we don't want this Mox, so I think we want to shred ourselves. We're certainly winning the decking war here. What can war get us? It, yeah, so he has the cryptic, so I don't want to cryptic into it. We can also like pithing eel for colonnade. Yeah, I think if we just put him on zero win counts, we can deck him. So is it better to like whir for a shredder though, and just like shred him faster and have more control over the top of his deck? I think whir for a shredder seems sweet here. Field of Ruin, your foot of blue. So he's like sending his colonnade away. Uh, that would have been fair. So we'll just do this for one. I guess one still lets him disdainful stroke it. Like he still has stroke. Well, we still want to do it, right? I guess now he can cryptic and draw the stony silence. I think this is good. Now we can unword ego and take the stony silence. So I guess we're just stony silencing to victory. That's our plan. I think we can get the colonnades with the shredder. Whereas if he plays the stony silence from his hand, the shredders are done. Alright, are we sure that's his last win con? No, because he, he still has a, a gating of the trials. So I think we have to take the stony silence and use the shredders. Right, like we have another shredder on top of our library. I think we're going to have pretty good control of the situation. Obviously, like, no. <laughs> Just so I don't let them de the shredders. They find point. Alright, so we have a Pithy Needle on top, that'll take care of the Colonnades. He still has like Cryptic Command as an option. I guess we just want to get rid of Opt. Like, Opt is a card that takes away control from us. Field of Ruins, fine, we still have another Basic left. Puts them closer to decking. Serum is way worse than Opt, very easy to control it with Shredders. Oh, because they draw the card first. Got it. Alright, so I should let Serum Visions resolve in the future. Sure. You can get us with that Colonnade this time. So if we're planning on Pithing Needling his Colonnades, 
I guess we still just shred this other one because otherwise we, we lose shred equity. So we'll drop this pithy needle on the celestial colonnade. And then we have a spell skate we could work for, but that doesn't seem that good. Since they have a terminus in hand. I think we probably just want to work for more. Shredders. Oh, they're sitting on another colonnade we didn't even know about. So, how nice is that? Don't want them to have a logic knot. I guess it's not like a win condition. And we still don't want them to have it. Dispel. Wow, they exiled that. That's amazing. Sure, draw your island. So I think we're getting word for another shredder here. And they're probably going to disdainful stroke it, which is why they got rid of their um, their dispel. They knew it wasn't a winning card, and they already kind of had more of that resource. So we'll get rid of the negate. So. Opt we think is really annoying. So we'll shred the opt. Dispel seems fine. I'm not really worried about decking, but getting more resources than them can be useful. I don't really care about them getting a dispel. Not that. Shred! And there's their other win condition. You probably forgot about it. We're possible. Get rid of that Gideon for sure. Since our grid is our only way to handle it, and we have no idea where our grid is right now. Um, we don't really want them destroying our lands. Terminus seems irrelevant. have a bunch of lanterns in case we need to like emergency shuffle their deck. Right. And we'll just hold on to this revoker like we probably just want to cycle it with the faithless looting that's on top of our deck. These lanterns are amazing, like, I had no idea how good they'd be in this matchup. Or the Wurrs. Or the Shredders. Shredders the card I want to say. So we can loot... Uh, don't need this, don't need this, we'll play this. Shred their Serum Visions, shred their Cryptic Command. Like, I've never played this kind of game against a control deck where, like, I'm actually just out-controlling them. 
Um, I feel like the egos feed in pretty well to this plan. Um, but having like the double threat of um, you know, either killing them with Thopter Foundry or uh, milling them out with Shredders, it's pretty interesting. Um, I think that historically I liked Tezzeret more than Nahiri. Like you could play Nahiri if you play a white version of this deck instead of a black version of this deck because Tezzeret's like a standalone win condition. Uh, but, uh, you know, Nahiri kind of like unlocks all of your like artifacts, so like if they do manage to land a Stony Silence, we can like still turn your Codex Shredders back on. I'm obviously gonna have to learn how to play this deck a little bit faster. Uh, where did I get the giant Carney T card? Yeah, um, I got it at. Uh, I think it's like GP Sacramento, like so a limited GP a few months back. I, uh, I got, it didn't make day two, and I was like, well, if I can't make day two, I can still make this awesome. And I uh, just like ground all the side events and, you know, got like a thousand tickets and uh, bought the card with the tickets, with the prize tickets, and uh, Eric Klug was there. He also got a giant card, and um, you know, he took like a photo with both of us with giant cards. He joked about making a giant altar. I think he does legitimately want to make a giant altar sometime, and um, then I had to take it home on the airplane, which was fun. Um, Nahiri is definitely still a faster kill, assuming you play an Emrakul. Yeah, I would play an Emrakul if I was playing Nahiri. Uh, and white cards are better versus sideboard cards that will be brought in against you. Definitely true. Um, but, like, I guess, like, you could play Nahiri, and then you still have to play all of the artifacts that you're winning with. Whereas before, if you played Tezzeret, it was like a standalone win condition. So, um... You know, it took up less space in your deck, but I think if you're already playing Lantern and Shredder, it might be the case that you could still take out Thopter Sword in some matchups and be a controlling deck, and because you have another win con built in, like Nihiri might be just as space efficient as Tezzeret. Um, yeah, he has double our time. I think, you know, uh, we might not be able to win in time. We'll try. Uh, the KCR I is uh, it goes with the Thopter Sword found like the Thopter Sword combo because you can sacrifice the Thopters uh, to get two mana and then do it again twice. So every time you perform a loop where you create a Thopter, sacrifice it, sacrifice the sword to make a Thopter, sacrifice the Thopter, you gain one life, one mana, and one Thopter. That's pretty sweet. Like as a one of that you can work for, it does amazing things. Um, all right, I'll tell the rest of the uh, the Carnage Tyrant story after uh, we either win or lose against this opponent, unless they tank forever on some play. Uh, we'll keep this. I think Ego is like super important in this matchup. And... Being able to needle out uh, Jace and to ferry early is a pretty big deal. As Kanta might even be more powerful than Jace, but because they're playing Rest in Pieces, like it's entirely possible that they'll turn off their own as Kanta's functionally.
So we'll black one blue. For stony silence, the detention sphere is a little concerning. Uh, I think that, yeah, we're going to have to have six as much as possible. Um, I think the matchup is still pretty good, like, um, Keep shredding myself for win cons. Um, like, I think I win this matchup close to 70% of the time. Like, we're going to need a grid to answer this Gideon or get an active Thopter Swords going. a pretty good card to have resolve for us. We have a sword in hand, so we just need a foundry. Right, like, I think, I definitely punted game one. We could have had infinite thopters if I had, you know, sacked one artifact. So I think, yeah, spell sky and equip sword is perhaps the blocker we need. One of our own grids, but we could get it back here. Like the Codex Shredder, we could sack. I don't think I want to do that yet, but potentially in a turn where they tap out, we can recover the grid, which is, I think, another exciting option that Codex Shredder presents. Yeah, a 1-6 is actually super powerful. <laughs> There's just a lot of things that a 1-6, like, beats. Like, you know, blocks Tarmogoyf, most Tarmogoyfs. Alright, so I think we need to ferry on this one. They have a counter spell. No. Uh, so they have Terminus mana, and if they Terminus away our spell sky, uh, they're going to still be able to attack with this Gideon. Might have been better to name the Gideon, but like Teferi will just like break the game. Looks like it's sticking for now. Spire. Get another sword in play. <laughs> I like that they've prevented all damage that this uh, spell skate can deal. I'll just shred myself so I can F6. Yeah, 2 8 way, way overpowered. Nobody can beat a 2 8. A 
they got going on here. Oh, wow, with Doran. I mean, Gideon is kind of ruining all of our fun by uh, preventing any damage that this guy would deal if he flipped a Doran out there. This is probably cryptic. <laughs> Spell Sky, too powerful, must return it. So, man. Might need to shredder this uh, grid back. Whir. Whir is pretty good. Let's see if we can make this whir stick. I guess we'll play it on our opponent's turn. Yeah, upkeep whir. We can play this spell sky now. Sure, we're dead to time. Um, I think that's part of like learning a new set of cards is like sometimes you'll just get a time. But uh, my goal is to like play good magic and kind of learn what the deck can do with these different cards. And if they're good enough, like I will get in the reps to be able to play, you know, play it fast. All right, so we're here. They have the Dispel. <laughs> They're finally going to deal with this uh, Spell Sky once and not for all, but I won't be back for a little while. Uh, we could be dead to Gideon, but um, like Actually not. We have, like, if they have another counter spell, yes. But we have a pithy needle in our graveyard. Like, we can just shred back for it. Alright. So we'll codex shredder for the pithy needle. And sacrifice a sword to cast Pithy Needle. Alright, so there's the Cryptic Command. And this is often why I name like Cryptic Command with Ego. Um, I was trying to find a quick path to victory. So uh, the end of the Carnage Tyrant story is, um, right, people are like, how are you getting home? I have to like fly on the airplane. And they're like, how are you going to get a like Carnage Tyrant through security? Also, like, where on the airplane can you put the Carnage Tyrant without it actually getting totally destroyed? And it turns out, um, like, the TSA is super into Carnage Tyrant. Like... Right, I, I carried it up with me to security, and I was like, here is my Carnage Tyrant. And they were like, ah, oh, that's awesome. Um, the pr woman who took it from me actually, like, roared like a dinosaur while holding the card. Like, she'd, like, walk up to other TSA people and be like, rawr, rawr. Uh, which I felt pretty good about. Um, I don't feel like she was misusing my property or anything like that. And, you know, I had a bunch of people who were like, oh, you know, like, it's a magic card. I used to play magic. Magic's awesome. And then... Uh, like, there's a first-class compartment for, like, coats and jackets. And, um, yeah, they stuck Carnage Tyrant in there with everyone else's, like, fancy suits. And, you know, Carnage Tyrant and I flew home. And, uh, you know, like, airport in Seattle, I ran into a bunch of, like, kids who were super enthralled by Carnage Tyrant. I guess they all play magic, so. And, you know, Carnage Tyrant and I have been together ever since. Alright, so we're going to bin the sword, and we probably don't need all of these bridges. There's even an argument for, um, like, binning two bridges and keeping the sword, because we could have 
we could cast the sword on turn two, and that would help us decrease our hand size. Uh, this deck that we're playing against does play Is It Charm? So it's possible that a sword would get disenchanted. Uh, this is sweet. Uh, Metamorphose is actually one of their better cards, so I'm just going to scrap it now. It's basically like a freebie in terms of counting for spell count for their thing in the ice. Right, their, their thing in the ice is too big. Um, at 7 8, it's very easy for Ensnaring Bridge to stop it. Uh, if they don't have an Is a Charm for this Ensnaring Bridge, they're like almost dead on the spot. Uh, if they have like some Phoenixes, there's one Phoenix, they're going to be able to put on a little bit of pressure. But main deck, they just don't have the right answers to get through what we're doing. Two phoenixes. So we'll draw a card and be up to five cards and we'll play two cards so their phoenixes will still be able to attack next turn. Not exactly what I want. Uh, the thing the ice kind of like auto flips. I think, I think we'll shred the Thought Scour. Thought Scour increases the chance of them getting more Phoenixes. Next turn we can play the Spire and Thopter Foundry and start making Thopters. We'll probably just eat the Lantern of Insight. Um, right, so like, I guess in the build of this deck I had before, I ended up like sacrificing my Baubles to Thopter Foundry a fair amount of the time. So I don't feel too bad about, um, you know, eating a Lantern of Insight. So they better have like a Faithless Looting or something here. Because if they can't get their Phoenixes back down, if we're still at like 13 by the time we get the Thopter Foundry going, they won't be able to like finish us off with Lightning Bolts, which is, Probably the only way we lose game one is, you know, we can't empty our hand fast enough and then they get to bolt us down. Uh, this is one of the matches where I would expect playing like Lantern of Insight and Codex Shredder to like hurt our deployment because I was playing like, you know, Bobble and more lands in those slots. Uh, I'm pretty sold though that I don't need 20 lands, that like 18 lands and 4 opals is pretty fine for this deck. All right, so we'll play this. Get down a Thopter Foundry, and now we're we're few enough cards in hand that their phoenixes can't attack. I will definitely shred that lightning bolt. Like, I don't think they're going to find enough reach to kill me. Like, I metamorphose in response, reasonable. Getting to force them to missequence their spells seems nice. But yeah, like, I don't know. Shredder seems neutral here. Um, yeah, post board, it's going to be all about whether or not they can find like Shattering Spree type cards, and I think having Lantern of Insight and Shredder to like avoid the most potent draws they can have against me seems pretty alluring. Lightning Axe doesn't really have any targets. All the Phoenixes. Sorry, Phoenixes. This is why I love Ensnaring Bridge. Like, just everyone's going so wide and so recursive, and Bridge just answers it in a way that nothing else can. All right. Um, there's an argument for taking out Witchbane Orb. 
they're not quite dealing enough damage to be relevant. Uh, if they have Swift Spear, Cloister can help stop it from attacking us. Pithing Needles really do nothing here. I'm used to being able to board out four Pithing Needles here, but I don't have enough <coughs> stuff to remove. I can win my decking. I don't really need a win condition. Let's see. I guess Orb, they don't have enough burn. They're not playing. I don't know. I guess they had Bedlam Reveler, so they probably have Madness. I want to keep it in that case. I want Cage. Yeah, I definitely want Cage. Um, I mean, Sphere's nice, but not necessary. We have all the spell skates. Orb probably isn't strictly necessary. And I think we don't need to go infinite. Like, some Thopters is enough. Shave a lantern. Maybe. I guess it's just a rock. Do you think we should keep the ironworks in? Like, I think we're okay cutting these. I think we just need the cloister. I think this is okay. I guess damping sphere might have been better than the lantern. Better than the fourth. Yeah, all right. If we make it to game three, we'll, we'll try changing the damping sphere for a fourth lantern. So Carnage Tyrant is not my only gigantic card. Um, as a member of the Is It League, I also, of course, have a giant uh, Ral Is It Vo Viceroy. Tugatog, when you say did he, I didn't catch it. What are you asking about? Sometimes I feel like when I'm in brewing mode, it's probably more appropriate to have Ral out here. So, uh, but no, I, I didn't put in the, the Damping Sphere. I left the fourth lantern in. So, um... I guess since our opponent is uh, deep in the tank on whether or not to keep their hand, if uh, any of you haven't followed yet, I encourage you to follow me. I uh, expect to be playing sweet variations on Prison Brews for like at least a little while yet. Like, I really love this deck, I really like this archetype. And, uh,. Thanks, Joseph. Appreciate it. Maybe our opponent's disconnected. So post-board, they're going to bring in a lot of artifact removal. They're going to have um, a braid and maybe like a couple copies of Ancient Grudge. And they're also going to have Surgical Extraction. So we're going to have to play around the Surgical Extraction with our Swords. So we can't like discard them on turn 1 to Faithless Looting. And we're usually going to want an extra artifact to be in play that we can sacrifice in response to a Surgical Extraction with one mana. Um, what else? The Graft Digger's Cages are going to hurt us because they turn off our Faithless Lootings, but they hurt our opponent even more because like, they're not able to flashback their grudges. And people feel like flashbacking their grudges is, is, I think, one of the most common ways for our deck to lose. Because right, it's basically like two artifact removal spells in one spell. Um, you know, it's not as bad as like Shattering Spree. Or um, Shatter Storm. Shatter Storm is definitely the worst thing ever. 
but um, like grudge is solid. Um, so we're both going to be trying to get like extra resources to fight over my artifacts. And if I can kind of get more artifacts and artifact protection spells than my opponent can get, uh, we should win. And if they can like break them through them, they can win. Um, they're better at digging through their deck than we are. Oh, you know, the other thing that might have been worth it is Torpor Orb. I've talked to some people who play this um, Storm deck, and they say some of them board out Bedlam Reveler because... Um, because, like, it's always going to be too big to attack, and they don't value the cards as much. And But, like... It does turn off our own Thopter Sword combo, but we can always sacrifice the Torpor Orb to turn it back on. So, um, but it might also be better than a Lantern. Like, this seems like a match where, like, shredding them isn't that helpful because they have so much card draw. We can occasionally, like, but I guess I'm interested in the idea of whether we can, like, pick off their removal spells. Like, if I can Lantern away or Shred Away and Abraid, or... I mean, even like the front end of an Ancient Grudge, like obviously I have Graft Digger's Cage, it's perfect, but even if I don't have the Graft Digger's Cage, like they're still losing a Destroy Effect. And protecting all of our Artifact Destruction Effects, or, like protecting ourselves from Artifact Destruction Effects is like the name of the game for this deck. And that's... like... It's not just having like the win condition of Shredder that's interesting, or like the card advantage from milling myself and getting like a Sword of the Meek or a Faithless Looting. But I'm really interested in these post board games, seeing if like Shredder can provide me like an extra layer of protection. Um, like I've said this a bunch, but like th this card does not, this deck does not care about card advantage at all. It cares about like, very powerful cards shutting down your opponent's strategy and, like, protecting those cards. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm thinking opponent has definitely, like, disconnected. So, uh, if anyone has any... So, uh, what do you think the Jeskai build looks like? Like, the Jeskai build of this deck? Let's see if we can... summon it up. So our collection, so if we were a Jeskai version, we'd obviously like replace these four Dark Slick Shores with um, Seacrum Coast so that we can make white mana and cast the Thopter Foundries. Uh, we'd lose access to these Unmoored Egos and would transform them into well, probably like a playset of Nahiri. Uh, once we have a playset of Nahiri, um, we might not need the grids anymore because like grid is just an alternate win condition, but Nahiri takes care of that. Though like grid does answer some problematic things like Kataki. Um, Let's see, we always need a cage, we need the rest of these needles. I guess Revoker is pretty critical. Yeah. Um, so I think maybe it's like, maybe you don't need all four Nahiris, maybe it's like three Nahiri and an Emrakul. Where Terra is decent in Jeskai. Um, what I'm always looking for is like cards that are like multi-purpose so like right something like abrupt decay or wear tear um you can answer specific threats with and that's nice but um what draws me to a card like nahiri is like it answers most of the same things that wear tear answers uh, although it doesn't destroy artifacts so like that's an argument for wear tear um but like nahiri is also like a proactive card so if you're playing against something like tron um, you know, where, like, a wear tear isn't really... Okay, maybe our opponent's back. Great. Um, so we've got Faithless Looting. 
We have a red mana source and a zero CMC artifact. So we can loot, a, loot on turn one to look for what we need. We've got part of our combo, we've got Jar and Spellskite as layers of protection. So as, as long as we can like find lands and dig to the pieces we're looking for, we're pretty happy. And this should do it. So we'll cast this Jar, play the Spire, pay the life to make red. <laughs> and uh, right, we didn't draw a land, so I'm just going to discard two lanterns. Uh, right, lantern doesn't do a ton for us, and usually I'd like to discard looting to looting in order to like not go down too far on cards. But here we're on the draw, so we're up a card anyway, and we don't want to miss our second land drop, so we want to be able to loot right away. Uh, so there's a bridge, the, and the bridge is also going to benefit from playing looting and looting, right? Like going down cards is actively beneficial. So I want to keep, let's see, if I keep one lantern, the opal is a land. Um, we don't have any sword pieces, so I think I'm actually discarding the Thopter Foundry, since uh, we can win by decking if they... Uh, you know, extra pay to our, um, our surgical extraction, our Thopter sword piece. And we don't have enough mana to cast this, but we can cast this lantern. So here we'll have to make a decision about whether we're willing to cast this bridge with only one layer of protection out in the form of the Welding Jar, or whether we want to wait for the Spell Sky. Um, they have two Phoenixes, so I think they're about to hit us for six, which is going to decide the issue for us. Like, I think we're just under enough pressure that we have to get this, um, this bridge in play. Uh, and a braid on top that might change things. Because now, like, we know that they have one of these five cards plus the abrade. Still though, if they're hitting us with two phoenixes, and we know that they're going to have three, that's six, fifteen, any burn spell kills us. So I think we just have to cast the incinerating bridge. And are they... yeah. It, doubly so, since they have ceremonies rejection, they could just counter our bridge. So we just need to commit, and this is one of those hands where... You know, if we're, if we're lucky, they don't have the resources they need. If we're unlucky, uh, they do. Um, man, if the spell skate had been a, a shredder, and so they're getting rid of looting. I mean, it's surprisingly effective against our current hand. Oh, I guess with Lantern we could shuffle their library and get the rejection out of their... Like, I'd like to cast the Spell Skite. I think I'm actually getting Lantern them. Like, all I want in the world is to protect this Ensnaring Bridge. The Lantern sitting around doesn't really do anything for us. Right, they had the Abrade. They're probably thinking about casting it there. But maybe they don't have two destruction effects. So there's one. So yeah, right, like, if they had the ceremony rejection, this would be a sad turn for us. Um... Spell Pierce doesn't get our guy. I guess we don't have Faithless Looting anymore, so there's no reason to sandbag lands. We should just play them all out for our bridge, because we can't play two on the same turn. Spell Skate resolves. Yay! Lantern of Insight. See? Like, it does work. Yeah. This game is going to showcase how insane looting is, since they only they have it. 
like usually we'd get to like loot our own cards and like you know we wouldn't be stuck with this dark slick shores we'd be able to upgrade it into you know more spell skates and welding jars and bridges uh, the card that we really want right now is Baldub Cloister. Um, <laughs> Alright. They're gut shotting plus lightning bolting our spell skite. Or maybe they're just using the gut shot since it's about to get pitched to the reveler anyway and hoping to draw a lightning bolt. Yeah, which they got there. Yeah, good line of play from our opponent. Um, Playing Gutshot Postboard against Spellsky is kind of scary, but respect to them for doing it. I guess it makes their deck much quicker. So, Cloister would be good. War would be decent. We could War for a Welding Jar. Shredder. We're short one mana, but we can actually Shredder back, like, Thopter Foundry. I guess we don't have a sword yet, so that's not that interesting. Um, one of our paths to victory here is by milling them, but I think we want to mill ourselves first. I think we'd really like to get a Sword of the Meek in the graveyard, and then like recover this Thopter Foundry. And I think you know this might showcase how awesome Shredder is. I feel like this deck, um, taking away its Faithless Lootings before would make me a super sad panda. Uh, but now I'm only like a moderately sad panda because I still have the sweet tool. Alright, so uh, I want to cast this Whirr while they're mostly tapped out and... I'm going to have to tap the Shredder to do it. I'm going to get a Thopter Foundry. This is a little bit risky because they could have... Like, they could draw another Shatter Effect at any moment and kill our bridge. Oh no, and I don't have a sword yet. Like, eh, super iffy. I don't like this line anymore. I thought I had a sword. I mean, I could get a Graph Digger's Cage. They still have one Faithless Looting, two Faithless Lootings. And let's get Graph Digger's Cage. Like, they took away all of our Faithless Lootings, so it's not like it's that valuable to us. a third Faithless Looting. So they're out of big dig effects now. I mean, I guess they still have Charter Courses. But we took away three Faithless Lootings from them. Alright, there's the Abrade. I think we're just dead to that. So, yeah, maybe a bad word. Um, I probably should have just defaulted to um, Welding Jar once I realized I didn't have the right sword pieces. Uh, yeah, I think I want at least one layer of protection, or like Bottled Cloister. I don't think we had enough permanence for Bottled Cloister. Okay. Um... Do we want Damping Sphere? Do we want Torpor Orb? They're still playing Reveler, so I think we do want Torpor Orb. Like, it draws them a lot of cards. Uh, they definitely seem like they took out quite a bit of their burn, so I like not having the Witchbane Orb. Um, Damping Sphere really does slow them down. We could like ego them. I, I like having a couple lanterns. Uh, 
Yeah, I think this is fine. Alright. We would love to play first. Uh, no mana. Hey, Tugatog, thanks for the follow. Glad to have you with me today. Um, yeah, no mana, so we have to mulligan this. Uh, this looks pretty good. Um, the Shredder could find us a sword by shredding ourselves. We have two welding jars. So, like, top decking a bridge or a war is going to be really good here. I really liked our opponent's choice to surgically extract our Faithless Lootings. Like, they took away, I think, like, six draw steps from us. And maybe more if we drew another looting. Uh, yeah, we're keeping. Uh, sword on top. That's amazing, because we're in the play, so we actually get to, like, Shredder and then Shred our sword immediately. So we don't have to draw it. <laughs> that feels good. That feels really good. Um, I'm really interested in lines for this deck that puts swords in the graveyard turn one. Uh, Faithless Looting can do that. Uh, but I hadn't really considered the fact that Shredder can also sometimes net you a uh, turn one sword in the bin. Obviously you don't usually know that's going to happen. It's just like a happy surprise. Uh, this is this is bad times for our opponent. Uh, having triple welding jar. <laughs> that means that they're going to have to draw a whole bunch of destroy effects to get to the Slopter Foundry. And in the meantime, um, we only have two lands, so it's going to like slow the rate that we can make Thopters. But uh, even a couple Thopters a turn is going to be pretty crippling. And the Shredder has, like, largely done its work. Let me shred myself one more time in case I hit another Thopter Foundry. But uh, I want to keep all these Welding Jars. So my plan is going to be... to uh, sacrifice the Codex Shredder. So we were tapped out several times with a sword in the graveyard. Uh, so I think our opponent does not have surgical extraction yet. So that's why I'm making these swords now, because I think it's safe to tap out this turn. And, right, like, next turn I will have no idea whether my opponent's drawn Surgical Extraction, so I won't know whether it's safe. Um, and, you know, the game state might make me want to risk tapping my last mana. And that they're just dead, because we may have Thopters too fast. Yeah, anytime you have Foundry online on turn three, it's super gross. So, we'll jump into another game. Yeah, so far I'm, I'm really impressed with this experiment. I mean, it's obviously like Lantern and Shredder are a powerful engine. But um, it just doesn't feel like I've lost enough compared to my previous builds to be unhappy with this. Although where it's really getting hurt is like the Tron matchup where having four Pithy Needles game one is super helpful. Um, but I can conceive of the world where, uh, you know, against Tron they have so few threats where you can actually, like, shredder, like, their few relevant cards. Like, the two things I'm really afraid of are, like, Ulamog. Well, actually, I'm just afraid of Ulamog. I feel like I'm decent at dealing with all the other stuff. Uh, this is interesting. Oh, so this is, like, Affinity. This is actually the other matchup where not having four Pithy Needles main hurts. 
But of course, like we happen to have one of our main deck pithy needles, so we don't even get the full brunt of it here. So I'll shred myself. Ideally, I want to hit like swords or faithless lootings. <laughs> Just off hitting that sword. Um, they don't have hardened scales out, but they could cast one and then a ravager and do some kind of gross things. But we have a bridge. So generally in this matchup, oh, I guess we can Lantern of Insight to get more information. Sure, I'm in. Uh, you need to pithy needle a walking ballista eventually because ballista will, you know, kill you with direct damage. Uh, and Ravager can run you over really early in the game. Spellskite makes the Ravager a lot less scary. Like, they'd have to have exactly hardened scales plus Ravager here, and I don't think that exactly kills us. It just opens us up to some risky lines. But I'm going to go for the Ballista here, since I'm just... We'll see if I'm going to regret it, but... Like, they don't have an Ink Moth Nexus in play, which is usually the way that they can kill you on turn two with a Ravager. Shredder might still be good in Tron. Yeah, totally, Kung Fu. One card left. Is it a Ravager? It is a Ravager. So I would have named Ravager, except for we drew, we have this information about a spell skite on top. And I know that. Yeah, we'll take that. So I guess the canopy could be anything. Like, they can just cycle this, so they might as well, yeah, get that information. So we get to cast Spellskite. I'm going Shred Overseer, since Overseer is, I guess it's slow. Oh no. Uh, I didn't think about the fact that they could do this with the Spellskite on the stack. not enough to kill us though, right? Like we just need to find a land immediately. We should stop on our upkeep. I do like this card selection that the Shredder's offering us. Like I'm not so much concerned about locking them out as improving my own draws. For anyone joining us, I guess uh, this is like an experimental build of this deck that includes Shredder and Lantern. So, you know, there's a lot of lines of play that are kind of new to me and interesting and all the comparisons I'm making are to the previous version of my deck. So that's interesting. I guess knowing that they could respond, and maybe I would have named Ravager with the Needle. I have not really thought about them just going all in relatively speculatively. Because, right, they're like five. They can get six counters if they eat the Opal. It's not enough for this to be presenting like a one-turn clock. Alright, well this is interesting. Um, I guess I'm not really worried about their steel overs here. I'm gonna shred myself before I forget. Second spell skate is not what we need. So we'll get one more chance to shred ourselves and we'll either need to draw wait they didn't attack? They cast the overs here. Wait, that seems like a wild mistake. They gave us a turn. Alright, we'll shut ourselves. Own card selection is more important most of the time, yes. Yeah, we got a bluff. Awesome. So here's our Spire Bluff Canal. And then we can just bridge here. 
<laughs> and I think Moth Nexus is way too big to attack. Yeah, that's that's the game. Sweet. Um So now don't need a damping sphere. Witch Pain Orb is basically a bad pithy needle, because like they can still kill our spell skites. Uh, they're gonna bring, bring in a bunch of like nature's claims. Uh, this is and this matchup I usually just go like full controlling. Like the Thopter Swords are fine, uh, but because I want all of this protection, there's not enough space for those to be my like win condition package. So I usually just win with some Tezzerets or Ether Grids. Uh, Revoker is like another Pithy Needle effect, which is pretty strong, though it often has to be the one naming Ballista for reasons that it might die otherwise. And I could either put in like one Thopter Foundry, one Sword of the Meek, or I could put in two Unmoored Egos. The games end pretty fast. Ego can be pretty awkward, so I think I'm going to just have this like alternate win package in case they like Pithy Needle Grid. <coughs> and they take out the Lanterns of Insight. Yeah. I'm going to have to really go back and like think about, rethink all my sideboard plans. Having Lantern of Insight as a second win con might change a lot of these matchups where I think I need to bring in another win con and don't really. Um, <laughs> so we got the Thopter Foundry. That's kind of fun. Um, yeah, we have two Wielding Jars to deal with Nature's Claims. We have a one drop, a two drop, and if we hit land, we can ensnaring bridge with like close to an empty hand pretty quick. Uh, obviously the best possible draw here is Mox Opal, so that we can bridge a turn early and empty our hand even faster. Alright, so we'll spire jar jar shredder. We still have our own faithful lootings in addition to the one sword. So I think shredding ourself is currently correct. Ballista. Cool. That ballista will go very well with our revoker. So we'll shred ourself. Spell sky. It's too bad. Spell sky is a nice draw. We know that we need another land before we can get a sword in play, so we have to name Walking Ballista. So we could, can we lose, I think they don't have enough artifacts in play for us to lose to a Ravager yet, but like, Hardened Scales being in play and Ink Moth Nexus in play should always be setting off alarm bells that if they play Ravager, um, they can just do a silly amount of like sacrificing to get counters and then transfer it all to the Nexus. Throne of Geth. Throne of Geth is fine. Um, we just want to take this damage. We're going to turn off the combat step with the ensnaring bridge before too long. So having the pithing needle effect in play is much more important than um, like just that one walking ballista. Now we have welding jars, so we could have you know regenerated it, but we want to save that for um, their nature's claims. All right, so now that we have, oh, actually, play welding jar is not worth your life. Agree. Ah, so they have their own Pithy Needle. So, it's possible that instead of playing Bridge there, I should have left the War up. Because, like, I think we probably could have died to a Ravager somewhere in there. Yeah, Rip Welding Jar. I maybe should have sacrificed one of the Welding Jars immediately 
to just put a regeneration shield on the ensnaring bridge. Alright, so now because they're about to hit us with infect damage, um, that throne of geth and the animation modules are kind of like live to kill us. We don't think they had a Ravager, or really like a Nature's Claim. <laughs> this is amazing. Mill myself. Easy game, our combo comes together. Um, I probably should have waited till they drew. These are some loose lines I'm following. Um, Right, like I could have milled my sword after their turn was over so that they can't like horizon canopy. I was thinking like they just didn't have a way to draw. I wasn't thinking about the fact that they can horizon canopy to like cycle a card. And now, all right, Overseer's fine. It's mostly like Ravager that we're afraid of there. So we are going to need a pithy needle for this Throne of Geth. Uh, but I think this game is like... All right, and they, they can still draw nature's claims. This game is mostly locked down. They don't have a lot of ways to cycle through cards. So if they don't hit a nature's claim pretty immediately, we can work for a pithy needle. We'll need it on throne and we'll need it on animation module, since those can both proliferate this poison to kill us. Oh, they have a claim. They're killing our foundry. Okay. I'm actually like not super concerned about the foundry. You think we I mean we can still use the um the codex shredder to get the foundry back if we want. Like it's it's yet another awesome versatile thing that codex shredder does. So, you know, like we can get that win con back if we really need it. Do you need to get this last card out of our hand? Alright, Welding Jar isn't a good draw for us. But right now, I think the Codex Shredder is like all we need to stay alive by manipulating the top of their library. And I think I want to whir for um, Bottled Cloister, two, three, four. Bottled Cloister will start getting us resources at kind of like twi twice the rate that we're currently at. And I think we can find uh, like the defensive tools that we need. I could have also, I guess, word with the Welding Jar on top of the library to not draw it. Uh, full Metal Tezzeret, you say, oh, yeah, I like Codex so much, the fact that you can blank Surgical as well. Full Metal Tezzeret, when you say, but why, do you mean like, but why which thing? Like what Jace is saying, what I'm saying? Yeah, having Lantern of Insight with War lets us kind of take advantage of that information and control the, the draws that we get. So we don't care about this Ballista, we don't care about their Welding Jar, we don't care about their Overseer. Oh, shredding them is dangerous. We just want to shred ourselves. If we shred them, then they can Horizon Canopy and, and get the card. Do you want a Mox? Sure. Getting a Mox gets us to 5 mana faster so that we can... Uh, Shredder to get back Thopter Foundry if we want. Uh, I see that we have Pithy Needle on top though, so we're you know not in a particular hurry. 
that can get us up to six poison here. All right, they're going, but that's fine. Like six poison is not dead. Uh, we'll let them have that Throne of Geth because we're just going to pithing into the Throne of Death, so it's a dead draw. So enjoy your th Throne of Geth. I'm going to shred their Phyrexia's core though. Um, just because I think it might be that we're milling them to death. And uh, it can have some annoying interactions with Hangerback Walker if you're trying to win in any kind of reasonable time frame. Man, gotta love a good two for one. This throne should probably be sacrificing themselves. Yeah, there we go. Throne of Geth. Alright, so we still have to deal with their animation modules. Uh, I think we're going to shred our cells next. Like, a canal is definitely... Oh, wow, a dismember. I guess they just probably don't have enough good cards. So there's their ballista. I guess we have to get rid of that dismember. Like, we don't want them getting rid of our walking ballista. Yeah, I'm I'm loving this. Like, Lantern, and, like, all the kind of, like, surprise cards that could really set me back before. I'm going to shred my own welding jar. All right, and there's a grid. That grid should lock the game up for us. Yeah, I'm just going to scoop there. Sweet. And this is right, this is why you're supposed to experiment. Like I, I thought my deck was perfect. Not perfect, but like finished, right? Like I went to a GP with it, I stopped testing new cards. But like Lantern seems like a huge upgrade. Uh, I have another experiment that I want to try, which is uh, there's a bunch of people who are super into knee heal spell bomb. And it specifically might shore up the bad matchup against KCI, so I think that it might be an experiment for like tomorrow or next week. All right, we have a shredder, we have looting, we have half of a combo, so we have a lot of shots at you know getting a sword in our graveyard. So I, I like where this is going. You know, we have only two lands, but I guess, I mean, I'd rather have Ironworks in my deck than in my hand. I think both Lantern and Thopter sort of been doing this thing where people just only want one or the other as a win con. I agree. Like, it seems like people are really either or on it. I also think a lot of the Lantern people, uh, right, they're playing Ancient Stirrings and they're not really thinking about Faithless Looting. And so, like, Th Thopter Foundry is, like, pretty bad when you're playing it with um, stirrings, right? Like, stirrings can't find it, and it doesn't find Whirr, which also finds it. So, like, your best tutor doesn't really find this win con, so I think it's kind of like a bad fit with stirrings. And I think it's not until you play, like, looting where it really, like, ties the two strategies together. So I'm checking myself. This is probably like KCI. It's like KCI or like Blue Tron. Alright. Uh, regardless of what it is, an early Thopter Foundry is almost always what we're going to want. And. Very heavy chances. 98% KCI? Alright. I guess I don't want to auto yield to that. Yeah. Alright, looks like KCI. 
I uh, want to loot ourselves. Their scrap trawler makes very good use of their graveyard. So let's loot. I guess we'll play this Glimmer Void and then loot. So dump the sword. Uh, dump the ensnaring bridge. Play the opal. Uh, shred ourselves. Or okay, so if we play this spell skate, we can go infinite next turn. It seems pretty good. Like we can sacrifice whatever to get the sword back and then play KCI. I guess whatever has to be, like the spell site or the shredder. Shredder's probably a better choice. Okay, so activate this, pay one. Does KCI usually run island? I don't think so. Regardless of what they're doing, infinite thopters has to be the right choice right now. Like, and they brick down lands, which is awesome. Like, they have no mana, and we have infinite. Yeah, they have no rocks. Um, yeah, nothing else really meaningful to do this turn. Oh, I guess we could have attacked with the Thopter. Yeah, they just see that it's infinite, so they scoop. So, yeah, there it is, the nut draw, pretty sweet. Um, all right, so Damping Sphere is meant to slow down their, their deck. Revoker is just supposed to like turn their KCI off. Uh, even though we like nut drew them against KCI, I'm going to assume they're KCI or like some kind of eggs deck. They could be. There's like another KCI deck that plays like uh, Bloom, Lotus Bloom, and like from the vaults, so it could be that. Um, spell skates and jars are good for protecting our revokers and spheres. We definitely want all these egos to name their like key cards. They're not really targeting us. Although I guess there is a like grindstone build where they mill us and sacrifice their things. We don't need the ironworks. Um, like the bridges may or may not be relevant. I hate getting beaten down. Let's see, needle, needle. Oh, yeah, we definitely need needles for engineered explosives. Where does that put us? 61. I like being able to, they almost certainly have Psy. Yeah. I think like three bridges is probably fine. Like. They're not coming at us hard, but we definitely want to draw this card naturally and not have to use one of our tutors, tutors on it. Yeah, I think you're right, Geek. They probably have Psy. Um, okay, so I think I like this combination of cards. It's possible that not having the grids is sad. Grid for Trawler. What do we cut? I think we'll run it this way and see what they're all about. Um, the trawlers, one lantern, one bridge. All right, geek. I will do that next time. If we get to game three, we'll get some grids in there. Yeah, I should cut lanterns more. Um, I think right now, since they're new in the deck, I just kind of want to leave them in all the time to see what they do in each matchup. But you're right that gridding trollers off is probably where it's at. And like you can also grid Psy off and grid off the, um, the Thopters. Might even need like two lanterns. I think going below three bridge has been... Like, except against control, I kind of hate going below three bridges because you, you just don't want to spend a war on them. Yeah, I think you're totally right about Lanterns not playing A. Like, it's our, it's our C combo in this deck. 
Um, so we have a looting. I think we keep this hand. Uh, Damping Sphere is particularly good against them, so that's why I'm just keeping what is otherwise a kind of mediocre hand. Do we actually just get to full on? Yes. So Jar, Jar, Mox, Turn 1, Damping Sphere. So this is very frustrating for them. Like their plan is to like egg into egg into egg, and uh, the sphere is going. Yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, we can still like sack the welding jar, like one to s protect the other one. They should have probably just blown this up right now. I'll get a spell skate in here since obviously uh, what we really need is looting. We need a pithing needle like nothing else. I guess we'll take spell skates. We're about to lose a land, so I think I might lose like double skite here. It's really important to have three lands, both to like flashback looting and also oh. <laughs> can't can't cast another spell this turn. Yeah, we do need a needle on E. So we're going to sacrifice one jar to protect the other. We'll lose the Mox Opal. So we'll still have one Welding Jar. The Explosives will be a two for one. It's not going to be a big deal in, until they um, find that evil Scrap Trawler. So if we needle here, it's okay. If we ego here, it's okay. If we ego, I think I think you still have to go for Ironworks over Trawler. Like I've tried not going after the Ironworks. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Having played both of their explosives, it makes me want to go after their uh, trawlers. All right, so I think we're looting here. Since playing spell skite into the explosives is obviously no good. We're very welcome. We might be about to lose our permanence, and we don't really need a bridge yet. So I th think it's got to be Spell Skite and lose the bridge. I guess if our goal is to need, like, war for Needle, we just need one, so we should discard the land. I can get Sphere back with the Shredder. Maybe. It might be a lot too slow. I think we, it has to be these. Like... They're going to play a bunch of nature's claims against us. I think we can't lose the spell scale. It also blocks um, a scrap trawler. So yeah, here we go. They're going to destroy, destroy the full package. Oh wow, they didn't explosives in response. All right, I'll take it. And I guess they have two mana open, so they can just blow this up whenever they want to. But maybe they're waiting? I don't know. I'll certainly give them the opportunity to tap low so that we can whir for needle and they won't be able to turn off, like blow up the sphere. Alright, so what we're going to do is fire off whir for two so that they think it might not be needle. Like they'll probably just blow up their explosives here, but there's a chance that they don't. 
like they have the mana for the fair, so this would stop them from activating their fair this turn. The fair probably represents KCI. They might also decide that we're dumb and getting something at CMC2, and then they can two for one us with the explosives. So. They, they figured it out. So the real question here, they've gone through two explosives, they might have one more. KCI is a monster for us. But we can get a revoker and then it won't work. They only have one card left. And if we play the spell skate, we can stop spying. I'm gonna get a Revoker. This is like a high high risk line, but this is a pretty bad matchup. And so I think if we Revoker here and then can land the spell skite so that it can't get claimed. Like they they will have another needle somewhere in their cards. Or another explosives, but it's pretty unlikely to be now. Obviously, like if they just play a scrap trawler. Oh wow! Thanks, scavenging booze. Yeah, I. Uh... <laughs> Have a propensity to do that. It's kind of rough. It's kind of heartbreaking too, because um, KCI is just like an awful matchup. So the prospect of beating KCI by like nutting them, I am a superstar. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> right, so like the prospect of beating KCI was thrilling. Now the Inventor's Fair and Maybe they'll give our revoker an activated ability. Scrap trawler. So it turns out. I mean, maybe we should just name it Inventor's Fair. Oh, we can't with a uh, revoker. Um, we can't get our. I guess we're going to attack with this revoker since it's obviously terrible. <laughs> Bridge stops it from attacking, sure. Uh, get back Sphere. I think... No, I think Sphere doesn't really... S like, Sphere slows them down. Um, but Engineered Explosives is really what's going to get us. It's, right, like, we need to find a Pithy Needle for Explosives. So we need to, like, shred ourselves and find explosives. We should have probably also just seen the line where they're going to use Inventor's Fair to get Trawler if we name... Like, even if we named the right thing here, it would have been the wrong thing. Oh, they're going after our Shredder. Amazing. I guess it makes sense. We can't get back anything. It costs five to activate, and we only have four mana. Otherwise, yeah, going and getting War would be sweet there. All right, sick top deck. <laughs> um, with the negate. All right, so they're going to... I guess they don't have any artifacts yet. <laughs> Joseph, I think you're right. I think I would have to name Revoker with that needle. <laughs> All right, there, there's the Mind Stone. They're going to sack it. They're going to get explosive back. They're going to take out both of our twos. I think we're going to be pretty dead from there. I guess we could draw another explosive here. Or another needle here. Uh, this doesn't really help us. I mean, they 
could just brick a bunch. Seems unlikely. The Shredders do seem like they're going to be good here, being able to take away their two CMC cards so they can't like set up trawler tra trawler chains. So yeah, I, I think I think we'll scoop here. Like I think I'd rather have the the time for game three than try and eke out the like few percent chance of winning we have left. Uh, I think our sideboard plan is fine. Oh, we talked about taking out two lanterns and playing grids. That makes a lot of sense to me. I, I like having answers for Trawler. Cool. We would love to play first. Uh, ooh. So, this hand is close to being good. We'd have to draw, like, I guess running lands or one CMC artifacts. We have 17 more lands. We can't cast Faithless Looting, but we have 6, 10, 11, 12, 13 artifacts. I don't know, uh, I'm looking for a, a vote from chat here. I think we have like 32 like pretty good draws. Um, and we have like, we have our best cards. When I played Tezwer, I always kept these. I never drew lands. I'm into the keep though. Mulligan vote, definitely not. Yeah, okay. I think, right, because we'd have to like hit twice, which means that we only have like a 25% chance of doing it. Yeah, without to, all right. Chat has spoken. This hand is pretty weak. Like, we don't have any dig, we don't have any disruption. We have four lands, which is more than we need. Uh, we do get one scry, but I think we're better off on five. And we'll keep this, obviously. Uh, Revoker on top is actually pretty good. Um, like, we just need to find an engineered explosives. Or we could draw into an unmoored ego. But, like, turning off Ironworks is kind of our our main plan. And the, the Revoker is the only, like, artifact that does the job. Yeah, Elvin, I think you're right. That hand needed two, two draws to do anything, which is asking a little bit too much. I appreciate y'all talking me down from a hand I might have kept. I do like speculative hands a little bit too much. So ripping the ego would be awesome here. Now I need to make a decision. I guess they one, two, three. Spire is much better than Void, by the way. I mean, they're both very good. Like just gold lands in general are great. They shine in different matchups. I think, yeah. I think we have to revoke it here for explosives. Like, I guess we could play nothing. And then next turn we can flashback looting. And I guess we can, yeah, I guess we just wait. No, we can't Glimmer Void. Glimmer Void makes this really, I guess we could, yeah, Glimmer Void makes it awkward. Oh, I spit, okay, you're right. 
uh, out of force of Havre, I killed, kept Glimmer Void, which is actually going to hurt us tremendously here. Like, I think the right line of play is Faithless Looting next turn, and we can't do that because I, I pitched the wrong land. So, Engineered, Explosives. So we're going to have to hit an Unmoored Ego now, because, like, Whirr and Revoker don't stop their KCIs. And it looks like they're playing KCI this turn. Maybe they're just going to go off here. So it looks like we maybe didn't have the time to wait anyway. But I think, uh, yeah, I think Alfie's got it right. I think we wanted to discard the Glimmer Void instead of the Spire of Industry. We might have even want to keep the canal. Eh, Spire's still the better choice. But, um... Right, all I need to do here is find Spine, and they can... Was naming Opal a consideration? You know, no, I hadn't thought about it, but maybe I should have. Um, the thing is, like, right, we don't know that they have a second Opal, and it just buys us, like, a turn. And this Phyrexian Revoker is a pretty unique resource. Yeah, this is turn two. Um, the Revoker is a pretty unique resource. Like, it's the only thing that can name KCI. So, like, using it up on Opal probably means that over the long run of the game, uh, we'll lose. Also, if you play Pithy Needle effects on anything but Engineered Explosives, as we saw, like, last game, they tend to get wrecked. Yeah, so we have Needle to hit E. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's... So, Alfie, the reason I don't like this line is because it's risky for us. Um, I mean, I see. We could have just assumed that they didn't have any and revoked KCI. Yeah, I think you guys are right. Like, and just pray that they don't have the EE and we're, we're fine if they don't. That seems smart. I'm going to say that we're... I think they're at pretty close to... Eh. They're not quite deterministic yet. Like, we're... S okay, there's the spine. <laughs> Storm count definitely gigantic. Yeah, okay, Chad, I think you're right. Probably just naming KCI and hoping that they don't have the Needle. Yeah, I think that's, like, just the worst matchup for this deck by far. Um, I think I think without a couple punts, we might have actually gotten there, thanks to that awesome game one, but... That's too bad. Uh, I feel like I was hoping to see a little bit more of Lantern, like, interacting with that deck, because, like... The matches can go long. If you get like the needle on explosives and either ego away uh, their KCI or do the other thing, uh, revoker it, uh, like it does get pretty grindy, in which case, like I could see Lantern contributing percentage to the matchup. Here, we can Spire for a Lantern and then Looting. We have a Bridge. Bridge is pretty good in the dark against the field. Alright, the Kozilek doesn't hurt us too much. We can still, like if they take Lantern of Insight, play Spire and then the next turn play Glimmer Void and play Spellskite. Um, you know, if they end up having, like, a Fatal Push or something for the Spell Sky, it, it could be bad. 
clearly we'd like to draw an artifact that's not a creature. But like this is the kind of deck that could have... Oh, they took the bridge anyway, so... Everything's coming together. So we'll play the Spire, play the Opal. I guess we could have played the Glimmer Void now. But uh, this kind of protects us from Assassin's Trophy. Uh, we don't tend to need to go infinite against a deck like the one that we're looking at. And I think we already have three mana sources. So I think we can pitch the Spire and play Glimmer Void next turn. We'll have plenty of artifacts. Yeah, that seems true. <coughs> All right, if they thought sees us again, it's not great. Cool. Ooze. Uh, Ooze is pretty annoying. Like they're going to eat our faithless looting most likely. But I'm pretty excited about seeing Shredder in this matchup. Like this is a very grindy matchup. And they are playing off the top of their deck a lot. And I think I think Shredder here probably adds a ton of percentage. Like especially since they have like main deck trophies. Yeah, Liliana. So we'll need a pithy meal for the Liliana. Main deck trophies and here I'm actually gonna discard the spell skite since she can just edict it. I probably should have milled myself with the shredder first to see if I had a pithing needle on top. Don't want this land. I guess I'm getting a land anyway. Foundry's pretty good. No sort of the meek yet. I guess I can play Glimmer Void and like looting. If I loot it, it'll be in my hand and then vulnerable to being discarded. So I guess I don't want to do that. So this is a matchup where like I'm usually playing Pithing Eels main. Like four of them, so Liliana isn't that much of a threat. So she's a little bit more of a threat here with the uh, shredders. Um but I think this Thopter Foundry should answer her okay. I would say, I mean, he's probably running Blood Raid Elf. Uh, I feel like most versions of Jund are running Blood Raid Elf right now. Like, it's a solid beater and it gets you into all of your other, like, attractive cards. So it gets rid of the looting. Super reasonable. So they're out of cards. We have control over the top of their deck. Feels like a pretty good scene. Uh, you know, Liliana isn't like ultimating us yet. The Opal can like sack to itself to make a Thopter to like restrict her even more. This is this is nice. Like usually, I'm just like, uh, living in fear of their top decks, and here getting to control them just feels like such a relief.
So this ooze is applying a little bit of pressure. I want to shred myself. I don't want this island. There's the needle that we need, so we don't need to like go crazy dealing with this Liliana. Uh, that's all very exciting. So needle. We just need to find a bridge now. Uh, the veil. So getting rid of this Tarmogoyf. Uh, if I went two Thopters, I could have gotten rid of the other Lily, but then I wouldn't have uh, a land or a lantern. Yeah, I think the other Lily isn't much of a threat. Um, I think I just let them draw this Tarmogoyf. Yeah, it's possible that we want Academy Ruins now. They're eating the bridge. Uh, I, don't, I don't want them to have the Confidant. I don't want them drawing like multiple cards of turn. But I guess I really don't want to draw this Lantern, so... Yeah, we'll almost certainly find it before the ultimate. Uh, there's already an artifact in the graveyard. So she's... Yeah, minus to get Bob is quite good. Almost out of time here. Uh, we have like seven copies of what we're looking for, but we could just miss. I feel like the shredder's done more for us than. Still missed. Uh, I guess we have to reshuffle with this lantern and just hope. Uh, we can still use the Thopter to chump, so maybe it's not time yet. Like, we can eat our own Opal and buy one more turn. Okay, so we, we can go full... full sacrifices next turn. There's a bolt. Alright, so foundry, sacrifice. Foundry, sacrifice the opal. And then we'll four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we take five, we don't care about the lightning bolt. Exactly. Let's go block here. Uh, no, the Ooze already took the the bridge. Yeah, Ooze was hungry. Ooze is very good against us. Like it might be their best card against us. There's another Ooze, and okay, so we can shred. I think we have to shred their Assassin's Trophy. But yeah, this faithless looting. If we cast it, we can't cast bridge. 
So I think we need to shred them. Uh, they're attacking for... We can still save ourselves for a while with Thopters. Yeah, so I think we're going to cast this looting. <laughs> okay, so we have what we need if we can live. So we just need to be able to sacrifice some artifacts. Um, and then still have... I guess we have a bridge on top, so we don't need this whir. Yeah, we want to be able to sacrifice the shredder. But... <laughs> uh, we can't use any of our mana to do anything but sacrifice things this turn. Like... Five. So we're going to take five... And just get, I think we're just going to get bolted to death. It's very close, but I don't think we have it. So I guess we just get the land so we can gain the most life possible. Because we can bridge ne next turn. Um, with three Thopters, we might actually hang in here. We need to keep this one on Liliana, but we can sacrifice Foundry, Lantern, and Shredder to make three Thopters go up to eight, block the Confidant, block the Tarmogoyf, block the Big Ooze, take two, go down to six, and then we can still absorb a Lightning Bolt. Oh, Colgan's Command. So what, if we can block two of these and take four, no, then the lightning bolt kills us. <sighs> we can definitely sacrifice that. I think maybe we need to like kill the Dark Confidant last turn. And Kulgan's command just kills us. So we'll just have to have our opponent misplay. That's our out. I don't see how they can misplay here, though. I'm not sure they're just going to bolt one of these tokens. And we still die that way, too. Okay. Oops. Yeah, that was an interesting game. Super close. I think the Shredder, like, outperformed a bobble there by a significant margin. So, Lantern, we're going to bring in more Pithing Needles. Take out the Damping Sphere, take out the Witch Bane Orb. Like, by the time... Yeah. I mean, Witch Bane Orb is kind of good against Colgan's Command, but only kind of. Um, so, I'm going to cut two Opals. This is kind of, like, grindy, and, like, when they're blowing up our artifacts, the Opals aren't as good. I'm going to cut two Faithless Lootings. Um, I don't want to loot at the beginning of the game because like they'll just make us discard whatever's like relevant and good. We don't need the ironworks, like Thopter Sword going is enough, it doesn't need to be infinite. And I really want to get Grid in here for Dark Confidant and it's actually good at messing up their Planeswalkers too. We only really need three needles, we don't need the orb. 
I like this configuration. If anyone on chat has, you know, second opinions, I'm happy to hear them. We don't need four lantern. <coughs> uh, we don't need four lantern, but I actually think like discarding the right cards is fairly important. So I like basically I want to remove the maximum number of Colgan commands and like assassins trophies I can. They have a lot of cards that don't matter, and I think having Lantern active is probably better than like a bunch of needles. Yeah. I think this is actually a met, like a match where having the Lanterns is good. Especially since they have discard and can make us get rid of Lanterns. Would I like to play first? I would. Um... Yeah, this looks pretty sweet. I don't really like mulliganing against their deck anyway, because like if they have thought seizes, you just lose your good stuff. <coughs> so I'm gonna play this on Maybe it should be Ooze. Like they don't have a Liliana yet and we have a foundry. I think redundancy is really good against this kind of deck that our opponent has. I guess that needle's pretty hard to name because, like, if they thought sees us here for our foundry, having it on Liliana would be substantially better. Like, yeah, they take the foundry. All that said, if they have any more discard spells, they're dead at this point, and we should have our we should be hellbent by the time they play Liliana. So like, it's gonna be pretty steep for them to activate her. It's a Charmed Wave. Yeah, and drawing this spell skate makes the Liliana thing even worse. I usually name Liliana first here, I just wanted to try it out the other way. Yeah. You have chosen unwisely. Alright. I mean, I did have the Thopter Foundry. I think maybe without like Thopter Foundry and Sword. It's wrong. Like maybe if you have the full full combo available. Right, so the, this tracker is a very very powerful draw engine. I think it it might actually be the best card in this matchup. The spell skate's dying one way or the other, so we should make it die in the most expensive way possible. Right, we could also find like a whir or a needle to save it. Right, like the tracker lets them draw two or three cards a turn at the price of some mana. So if we can't find like our bottled cloister to start pulling ahead on resources or like stay at parity, <laughs> yes, the spell skate will go out. In a blaze of glory, passionately. So, uh, because I had to make room for the lanterns, I moved the pithy needles to the sideboard and currently moved the tesserets out. Uh, this is one of those matchups where you really, really want tesseret because you really want like card engines. So I think, yeah, we might have to figure out like how to make space for the Tesserits again. But like once we have the Lanterns, like I'm just not clear on what the weakest cards remaining are. So, and like maybe there are sideboard cards that cover things that the Lanterns also, I mean, Spellscape, 
you kill Liliana. I'm sure they have another one, but... Jar or Ego? Yeah. Right, Jar and Ego are both kind of doing... <coughs> work that the Lantern does. Maybe shave one of each. I don't know, I'm not like... I mean... Oof. Pulse. Usually having two bridges is good. Um, yeah, so there if we'd like, if we'd pithic needle Liliana, and we had our spell skites, I guess they would just destroy the spell skite. Yeah. See, it's, it's sequences like that that make me feel like you can just never get rid of your, um, like, jars and skites. Like, they're just so good. Like, I think I'd much rather cut an ego from my deck than even the last welding jar. So we need a top deck here. Foundry's not the top deck we need, so we'll die on the spot. This is usually a decent matchup, but doesn't always work out. Um, okay, so it's, hmm. The orb? The problem is, yeah, so like, Torpor Orb, is a card that is like a hedge against Knight of Autumn, but like the decks that have Knight of Autumn don't have a ton of Knights of Autumn. And if you have an active, like Witchbane Orb, uh, or not Witchbane Orb, um, Lantern, like maybe you don't need it anymore. Like maybe you can just depend on filtering the top of their deck. Like you don't have to play around these like weird late game one ofs because you have a good way of stopping them. So yeah, Kung Fu, I think that, that might be the case, like that might be the thing to do. Uh, so it's uh, it's 2.30, I think we, we've learned a whole lot. Uh, I'm pretty impressed with this experiment. So I'm probably going to like, you know, go back and look at, um, you know, knowing what I know after playing, like how to shift around our sideboard for different matches and where to, you know, find room for those Tezzerits and whatnot. So, um, I think we're going to find somebody else's stream to raid. Uh, thank you all for joining me. I'll be here tomorrow, 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. PST, and uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, the following week, and most weeks. And, uh, you know, if you like the stream, give me a follow. If uh, you like what I'm doing, even consider subscribing. Uh, I'm trying to do this kind of full-time and see if people can support me. Uh, good luck on future leagues if I'm not there. Oh wow, thank you so much Joseph, like that's amazing. I'm truly grateful. And uh, let's see, who should we stream? If any of you are a fan of someone who's doing Constructed right now, uh, we could go over and raid them, but otherwise let's see. Let's see who's around. Um, magic, a totally sweet card game, drafting guilds, Crixus, I guess we should be looking for people with the, uh, the old Moto interface, let's see, we have Legacy, Buried Phoenixes, Ultimate Masters Draft, me with Modern, I guess I can't read myself. All right, I don't know who this is. Karn City. It looks like... Wow, oh, Boat Broom. All right, this person's playing Modern, so we'll, we'll raid their stream. Ex Dingus Khan. Raid. Ex Dingus Khan. for mature audiences, so if you don't like uh, that kind of language, avert yourself. 
Raid. Raid.
like short term while the company is small, it wouldn't make any sense, but like, you know, future maybe you could expand that way. Sounds reasonable. Man, so he just has a huge medicine bias, huh? Uh, uh, this is the cable that you want. I think that his preference, if, I mean, basically, like, the Madison option was, if that's the way to get me to work, he is interested in working with me in some capacity. <laughs> Got it. But you coming to New York is, like, way more interesting for him? Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. Right. Like, part of it is just like, but if I hire people to New York, then I get more people in New York. <laughs> I mean, yeah. He's like, the, the thing about having a company <laughs> is you want to, you know, use it to facilitate some of your interests. <laughs> right. <laughs> Made 40 users on my own. Nice. Yeah. How is the deck? Um, good. Um, the weirdest consequence is that it fucks up your sideboard because, like, a couple of the pithy needles. There's no yeah, I still think you should try like two lantern, four needle. Yeah. Like, just total in the seventy-five. That makes sense. Frequently, when I was like, "What? What should I cut?" All the like hardcore lantern people were like, two lantern." <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Shredder is absurdly synergistic with the deck. Um, yeah, Shredder, it, Shredder is just a good card. Yeah. <laughs> um, the card does not get enough respect. So there's a sweet game where I had Mulligan and got to Scry and saw that Sword of the Meek was my top card. And then I got to go like Shredder, Shred my Sword. Um, like, right, like turn two, Thopter Foundry. <laughs> Turn three, like, rah, thopters. We'll go on that game. Right. Yeah. That's weird. <laughs> <coughs> so, um, and like, Lantern is even kind of reasonable because, right, sometimes you're like, that top card isn't what I want. Like, sh shuffle them. <laughs> Um, oh, or like we're, I mean, we're better, but like shuffle them is fine. Oh, like just bring my lantern. <laughs> I bring my lantern a lot. Um, right, it's like more or less what Bumble does. It's like you get rid of this thing, <laughs> get another card. Sure, as long as you, you know, didn't want the card. If you did not want it, like, if the thing you're getting rid of had no value. Right. Um, also, I just, I'm now down to, like, 18 land and 4 moxes. That didn't seem bad. Right, that's like a lantern deck. Sure. Um, like, coming from 20 lands and 4 moxes, like, I had concerns. Mm -hmm. I mean, the lantern decks have stirring, so like, it's a little more like a fan land instead of looting. So I feel like they can justify fewer lands.
are you doing them? I'm doing some work to set up a business. It's um, complicated and not interesting. I printed a thing and then realized that it was not the thing that I needed to be printed that I needed to print and that the thing I needed to print doesn't seem to exist yet. Exist yet? Yeah. Okay. I'm just really hard to print. Yeah. Well, my bank told me that they would like put some files in my like web branch thing and they're there, so. Okay. Files in Shit. <laughs> 